Uh, all right, Luna Mills has tipped me a dollar thirty. It says, "I'm back." What's your favorite type of shower? Uh, when shout out to your buddy money, Grug. When you when you go outside, a nice all lean in manual. Greenbacks start falling from the sky, and you raise your face up. You're like, "Oh!" You start dancing. You go, "Oh, oh, money, money, yeah, yeah." All right, I don't know what the hell you're talking about, but thank you for the first tip of the day. Shout out to your buddy Grug. Money. Oh, money, money. Yeah, yeah. These contributions are mandatory. You're, you're, you're still on mission one. Money, money. Yeah, yeah. Baller alert. Clock-in doesn't work, huh? Alright, give me a second. Also, hello everybody, clock-in. If you can, but you can't. Alright? Alright, Clockin is back. Let's listen to some more music. Wings of Redemption can easily collab. You send me over the beat, I drop my nah, not this one. I want every day. Hello everybody, welcome to this uh, chill session of whatever this is. We're gonna watch KO Gaming today, so it's gonna be fun. You know how much I love KO Gaming. I cry because it hurts my fucking feelings, dude. Like my stomach hurts. Like my stomach hurts. Shout out to your This is my job, man. This is why I put food on the table. Real talk. Sleep all goddamn day. Shout out to your buddy, every bro. Day. A nice man. Play the same fucking games over and over and over again. Every day. A nice man. My day is shit. It's gonna be shit tomorrow. It's just gonna be shit after that. It's just gonna be shit after that. My day is shit. It's gonna be shit tomorrow. A nice man. Shout out to your buddy, bro. I'm fat dude. I'm going to cheat. I'm a fat dude. Going controller to a beat. I'm a fat dude. I'm going to cheat. I'm, I'm lurking. A fat dude. I'm a fat dude. What fucking excuses did I make? I'm not fucking afraid. People ask me about my weight. Waking up every day, I can see myself right now choking fucking scumpy. Grumpy because I need to get subscribers, dude. Me! Oh, 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 oh my god, because I need to get subscribers, dude. Insulting my gaming skills of perma band. Shout out to your buddy, bro. A nice leaning man. Sleep all goddamn day. Every day. Play the same fucking games over and over and over again. Every day. Yesterday there was some uh, sweet ass gold dust with the knife and the wind doesn't blow in a direction it blows forward. Very fucking nice. And that Capcom filler rant, that was just like a, a, a token rant. He had to have a rant so he could just... whatever. But there was a rant before that too. It's ridiculous. That's great. It, and it makes you think, what makes a guy so salty? So fucking salty. He is so mad at life. So pissed. I have no fucking idea. That's why I'm here. Play the same fucking games over and over and over every day. I love this fucking song. My day is shit. It's gonna be shit tomorrow. It's just gonna be shit after that. Shout it's out to your buddy, bro. That. My day is shit. It's gonna be shit tomorrow. It's gonna be shit after that. It's just gonna be shit after that. A, 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 a nice lean in A nice lean in manual. I looked at myself in the mirror. Get in my pistol, sheet.
say some some bitches can't take the dick, son. They just can't take it. No, it's too big, daddy. It's too you doing it too hard, too fast. I beat you with a fucking pistol grip. Fucking pistol grip. Fucking pistol grip. I would destroy your face. I would destroy your face. Big ups everybody, big ups chat. Big ups people that are still showing up. Attendance is great. We already have some number of likes that I don't know. But it's probably like, I don't know, like 10 likes, man. That's a lot. That actually is a lot. Because you're fat. Because you're fat. You can't see your dick. Because you're fat, you can't see pussy. Shout out to your buddy Grug. I don't really have sex because I'm fat and weak. You'll never be thin. It ruins everything. You'll never be thin. It ruins You'll everything. never be thin. Wings of depression. Wings Shout out to depression. all the people playing uh, Elden Ring right now. You're being called out. Fat tits of lordation. You better attend this stream, dude. It ruins everything. I beat you with a fucking pistol grip. Fucking pistol grip. Fucking pistol grip. I would destroy your face. Pulverize. I would destroy your face. Pulverize. I beat you with a fucking pistol grip. Fucking pistol grip. Fucking pistol grip. I would destroy your face. Pulverize. I would destroy your face. Pulverize. 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 I haven't had a Shamar Moore segment this time, but oh, you know what? You just reminded me. Since I'm doing the intro, I'm gonna show you while a song is playing in the background. Big up, Liquid Richard. Uh, now look here, look, listen, and then I'm gonna show you a piece of piece video that is great. Now, what I found the other day, you know, I was lurking, stalking when you least expect it. I was looking up Shamar Moore clips, right? Look here. Uh, now for those of you who don't know. Uh, this was a DSP sentence. Uh, you know, he's the, the guy that said lurking and stalking. He's an actor. He was in the TV show Criminal Minds. He has his own TV show called SWAT, I guess, or something. I'm lurking. Yes. And then I found this channel, which I'm convinced is the best fucking channel. And I, I'm going to show you why. I have a lot of arguments why. Um, I think I even added the video to my watch later playlist. Right. Now, I go... Where did I go? Did I add it even? Uh, come on, no. I need to find this. Okay, I'll be right back. If you continue to say Richard, whether you're a sub or not, I'm just going to get rid of you for 24 hours. I'm banning anybody trying to give me advice. All right, ban everybody. Shut. Ah, uh, where was it? I think I liked it even. This makes me go like this. I think I liked it, I right? I liked a bunch of uh, Elden Ring, Elden Ring story time for dent heads. Oh yeah, this is a cool fucking video. I don't know, bro. And I like my own video because if I don't, nobody else will. That's the the unwritten rules. But I don't fucking know. Uh, where did I add it? Maybe I added it to the to the stream playlist. Let me find him. Can't be far. Listen to Ban World, meanwhile. We're still having an intro, so... Sleep all goddamn day. Play the same fucking games over and over and over again. Um, all day. Barely able to walk. All day. You get banned. Really tall. And you motherfucking mods. This is why you get banned. Banned J Squared as well. Welcome to Ban World, buddy. Get the fuck out. Welcome to Ban World, buddy. Why? There's a reason I'm 30 goddamn one. Gray hair. Gray beard. Real There's a reason I'm 30 goddamn one. Gray hair, gray beard. Real talk. I don't give a fuck, man. I got eight my fucking life at this point. Welcome to Bam World. Bam World. Bam World. Bam Bam World. Shut the fuck, fuck, fuck up. You fucking dick so Shut the fuck, fuck, fuck up. Ban these guys, dude. You fucking dick suck. I don't give a fuck, man. Alright, I can't find it. Fuck it. 
Uh, we're gonna start soon with some, I don't know, Twitter? Daily rap? I don't fucking know. But he wore the hat yesterday for, for Pokemon, so he's doing okay. Worthless ass nigga. We talked about you type of people. The niggas that like to kick back and critique niggas that actually do things. Mars worker. KYS bitch. Motherfucker, you fascinated. That's why your bitch ass is here. <sighs> Alright. She be fucking, she be making me cut off my eyebrows. She be fucking, I don't know why she makes me cry so deeply. Said she don't wanna fuck with me. So I show her that I'ma get it that money. Oh my god, she says she don't wanna fuck with me. Oh my god, oh my, oh my god. Yeah. I'ma pile up on that batch. Show her how to get it. I'ma hit a fucking lip. Pop these perks, y'all. I'm gonna show our bar, yeah. Oh, I spend all this fucking time looking for a stupid ass video. Yeah, we're gonna start after this song, okay? I gotta show you some stuff. I'm gonna drink clean, get over my shit. Psych, I have no idea what I'm gonna do. She don't leave me no more. I don't know what else to do. Shout out to your buddy, bro. A nice lean in manual. She be fucking. She be making me cut off my eyebrows. Cut off my eyebrows. Scumbags. She be fucking. I don't know why she makes me cry so deeply. Me. Yeah. She says she don't wanna fuck with me. So I show her that I'ma get it that money. <laughs> oh my god. This is a super so greasy song. I don't know why. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. All right, welcome. This is it. We're putting. We're turning up the the whatever okay, we're going on it's the day on <laughs> welcome everyone to this uh, entertaining uh in in quotation marks content in quotation marks about dsp uh first we're gonna do a month in review thanks to piece of peace the guy that uh, does the numbers so the numbers don't do us instead you know what i mean uh, big ups everybody in chat. Hello. How's it going? How's it hanging? Why are we good? What? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, this is a video summary of last month. And let's see how much Piggy made. Uh, spoilers, it's a lot, but it's also less than the month before. Okay. And it's also a pretty chill video. So yeah, let's let's get into it. Then we got what? Twitter, we got Daily Rap, we got some KO Gaming reviews. Today is about gaming. It's not about bullshit. And, and burgers. It is about talking about games. Because I really like watching his reviews because I like reviews in general and his are terrible. And we're gonna talk about why. So yeah. And this has great music as well. Six thousand in tips. In tips only, simply. Simply, truly, raw. Raw tips is 6,000. All right? Patreon. Remember, this still is a thing and exists, and he gets the money from it. How much? 300 and what? 40? 373. For nothing. This is actual, just like a handout money. Handout money. $300. This used to be my rent money. It used to be, but it was just like for a room, so yeah. Membership. We're getting a lot from membership. 367 is current. Wait, let me go back and uh, examine this. 367 is current plus 15, which, uh, sure. An all-time record is 391. And his, I think his memberships cost 399 or something. So yeah, multiply it by that and you'll see. And then cut off the Susan's part. Susan wants her part two. Super chats! There we go, the super chill. 2100 and 65. By the way, all these numbers and the guy doesn't have money to play video games. He doesn't have money to buy, purchase games for his business from all of these numbers because they all go somewhere for bills. Obscure bills. YouTube, in total, we got $5,200, almost $5,300. Wow. 
that he's gonna get on March 21st. Shout out to that. And fees, we cut off PayPal's fees of what? what is that, like almost 3% and 10% from Patreon, 30% from YouTube. Okay, let's see the after fees special. Net revenue. And net revenue is 9,900, 9,972 American chill bucks, freedom bucks. Average per day, average dollars per day stream. It's 416, which is a drop of, all, of almost 3%. Time streamed 169 hours. And hourly, the guy, Dark Side fucking Phil, yes, that same guy, gets $60 an hour to do this. Wow. Shout out to your buddy Grug. Shout out to fucking Grug. That's godlike. And he still spends it all on bullshit, doesn't have money for games. I'm very confused with these numbers. And this is what, per day? Yeah, I guess so. And all of it just goes away. He made more than $10,000. How did it all go away? And the thing is that if, if even he has like mega crazy spending habits, he could still pre-order games so he can, you know, just uh, restrain himself from spending the money on other bullshit first instead. So he pre-orders a game and then spends it all on pulls, but then he doesn't need money to buy more games. But no. No, let's just uh, spend everything. And when the time comes for games, then we're gonna beg for games. First we beg for bills. Almost 11 fucking thousand dollars a month in a single actual human calendar month. This guy fucking made. And that's why we love him so much because we can't, still can't figure out why. Still can't figure out who does this. Now, now let's go on Twitter because it's great. And everybody loves Twitter. Uh, just as much as they love Phil. Uh, now, his name is... They call me DSP still. Th he should change this. This is some shit that like a, an artist would put or some shit. It's, it's really... I don't know. Has flair to it. And DSP has no flair to him. First, the, the thing that greets us is a shitty schedule. Of course, that's always pinned. Because you don't want to open somebody's page and be greeted by something that is actually like welcoming or something it's just a fucking shitty schedule then we got a shitty audio schedule then we got a, a, a schedule again then we have thankfulness gratitude then we have chill streams have returned for pokemon oceus where he crafts explores and has a great interactive time together i hate these fucking buzzwords they are so annoying uh Okay, then we got a reminder that the chill stream returns, which is like, what, two hours before the stream actually returns. So he needs to remind you, like, I don't know, like, you're gonna forget. Then we get Elden Ring. I accidentally killed a boss. This is like a humble brag. I guess he wants a tap on the back, but instead he got 12 likes. Uh, tons of progress. Return stream. Which, whatever. Oh yeah, that's from the day off. And then that's basically it. I think he was salty at somebody else. Did he call somebody pathetic again? I, I still forgot what happened. Oh, this is Capcom. He replied to Capcom. And uh, their tweet was... The thing that he read yesterday. That he responded to with a large rant. And on Twitter what he said was... Seems you are dead set on killing your 35 year history. As a leader and innovator in fighting games. It's tough to not be embarrassed with your actions since the botched release of Street Fighter V to the present. We're making up a narrative, by the way. Uh, because apparently they're embarrassed by Street Fighter V. If your goal is to destroy all that you've previously built, carry on. And this is nine hours ago. So it was actually nap time. It was actually sleepy hours. All right. Then what we got next is nothing. This is done for, for here. But let's go check my Twitter because I posted some shit about the guy because that's mostly what I post. Uh, and uh, I wanted to show you. Now, this is my Twitter. And first we got... Uh, yeah, I got an announcement here for this. But some guy on, on Kiwi Farm, shout out to IFBB Pro Phil, found DSP and what comes up as a search suggestion uh, back in the olden days. 
And I did my best to enhance it with the thing that I usually enhance stuff, but now I'm going to tell you what it says in case you, you can't figure it out. Now, first of all, the most visited site is the kingofhate.com, right? The kingofhate.com. Fantastic site. Now it's called DSP Gaming. Don't go there, by the way. Uh, then we got xvideos.com. This is the second most vis visited site. Number three, we got actual hentai. Because it says, here it says, anime, hentai, and more. You can read it very clearly. And first it says, free hentai, something, something, something. And, and this is legit. This is the guy. First, number one is Phil. First of all, we jerk off to Phil. Then we jerk off to X videos. And next, if we're extra mega depressed, we jerk off to anime titties. Very fucking nice. And then we get the King of Hate HD and, and something in between that I can't quite figure out. It looks like a Google... It might be uh, something else, might even be a YouTube, but it doesn't have a, a like a thumbnail icon for it, so I wouldn't know. So yeah, this is what I wanted to show you, I thought it was very funny. Which it's, it's alright, obviously you're gonna fucking jerk off. You're a guy who's known for jerking off. And uh, is there anything else interesting? Yeah, in case you didn't see this, he went mildly viral, not even this, he got like 3,000 upvotes with one of those bait... Uh, posts on reddit where someone said american red cross worker killed by putin's goons and it got actual dsp jerking off and it's fake and it got deleted but it got 3000 upvotes before that uh big ups klaus mystery for a super chat i thought dsp said that no one cares uh uh wait what no one cared about pingas what I'm sorry, dude. Explain yourself in chat. I demand an explanation so I can understand. I'm sorry. I couldn't get it. Uh, then we get the next one. I retweet Tim Dillon because he's chill. Then we have an enhanced photo of Phil because I like making those. It's, it's amazing to see him enhanced. And I, I think that's it with Twitter. That's actually it for now. Oh, here we have another one, which is this is from an actual bait troll thing. And uh, yeah. Yeah, that's basically it. And yeah. That's it. Let's go on YouTube. Let's watch some, uh, what was it? A daily rap, all right? And I'm going to get uh, some music in the background so we don't, I don't know, get bored, I guess. Uh, so DSP Gaming, we have a published stream, which is very catchy title. Interactive open world fun returns. Because people love buzzwords and they work all the time. Oh, Klaus meant uh, e-penis. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> Until DSP cares, and then everyone cares. Okay, what we got? Uh, first impressions is Phil with the hat, and then we got 30 dislikes. Good evening, everyone, and welcome because to the obviously, Rap. Did people love the, the latest and greatest Elden Rings? Let me see. Oh, yeah, it got uh, 1,600 views, which is about twice as much as what Pokemon gets. Because last time he played Horizon, even. Even Horizon. The, the one of the like top five games of this year that are came out or about to come out. It got 540 views. So it seems you guys are not enjoying it. Good evening everyone. Alright, let's go back rap. here. And this is the daily rap. Okay. Let's uh Tuesday, yeah, let's March hear this. 2022. And I'm gonna skip through the nonsense schedule segment because that 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 shit doesn't matter no an interesting he talked about capcom which this shit is terrible because he recaps the whole stream aren't i supposed to actually watch the stream if you want to recap shit or make it easier for people to watch it then put on some timestamps. what is this uh today was elden ring consecutively the final consecutive elden ring stream elden ring stream after this it's variety again rather than just elden ring non-stop was a great stream. I explored a little bit further in Stormvale Castle, found some more items, found an NPC, which was cool. Went ahead and got my revenge on Godric after just a couple of fights. I did not summon this time because people were giving me shit. That's great, Phil. I'm proud fight. of you. So I decided not to summon and just fight him head up. And I beat him in like two or three tries. I can't remember exactly. I like that for shit. this, uh, for these videos, he, he turns off the leaderboard, but he's still wearing the hat, which makes me instantly realized he made more than a hundred dollars but it's like i don't know why you would take off the leaderboard and keep the hat Dead. Um, i don't know it's just uh it it's just a gimmick thing i guess well it was a great way uh return back great 
attendance, great engagement, support was outstanding, everything was out absolutely great. Great yeah. engagement, I fucking and hate it tonight, when he says it, it's it time for the lamest marketing. thing. And it went really well. Because nobody says it like that. Nobody. And even like the actual shill YouTubers. Like actual shill YouTubers that run like family channels and clickbait everybody. Even they don't say engagement. Yeah, they're gonna tell you to smash the like button and subscribe if you wanna wake up tomorrow. But they don't talk about it like this. It's just this guy that talks about it like I'm actually working for him. And I'm a part of the channel. In, in not a good way, not in the community sense of I come here to chill and enjoy myself, but in the sense of I have to do work to please this guy. We have insane amount of viewers uh, now. We have about 200, which is about... What yeah, he sees people as, as bots, and that's been going on forever. And the if, if you want actual evidence, look no further than the begging videos in 2017, the black shirt begging videos, all of them where he was just basically at some point admitted that if you watch the ad on YouTube, he doesn't give a shit if you're gonna like the video, watch the whole thing, it, like even care about the video. Even if you see the ad, he doesn't give a shit. That's how he sees people. It's all a video game for him. That's why he treats his money like video game money. Yeah, for Pokemon. And always acting like he can just grind out some more money. You go just kill some more enemies and you get some more money. Time. But it went well. Engagement was good. We had fun conversation. Um, we actually finished up the fourth region out of the five regions in the game. I didn't even know we were going to do that. I thought that we were just kind of getting to the start of it, and we beat it. And we ended up doing a bunch of other stuff, and now we're in the fifth and final region. However, for what I'm to understand, this is the hardest region, longest region in the game to do. In addition to that, once you beat it, apparently there is content that's, I don't know if it's needed for the end of the game or the true ending, but I know there's a bunch of optional, not optional, but areas we haven't been able to enter yet in each of the five regions. And I'm actually wondering, will we be forced to go back um, and kind of go to each region and do a cave or mini dungeon inside? Oh, the this is worthless. And finish it before it's worthless. I hate this. Support was pretty the fuck. Good. And he's, he's reiterating. Oh, no. Okay. Now we're talking about Pokemon. But you got to mention tips. Two different people like why would i care pokemon which was awesome why would i care this uh, first of all this video is completely irrelevant and this series should not exist but if you want to make it exist this is not the good way if you want to make it exist this shit should be two minutes long that's that's all you just say today we did this we did this oh my god i beat this boss tomorrow i'm playing this come check it out that's it it should be an actual youtube short this is how he should utilize the YouTube Shorts. Because YouTube Shorts are perfect for exactly this. Give somebody some highlights. You can even show some gameplay. Show a time where you died or something fun happens when fucking Jasper jumps on your head or whatever. It's just like a 10 second clip. Then talk about your schedule for tomorrow and that's it. It's like a minute to two minute video at most. But no, we got six minutes of a pre-stream. But it's actually a post stream. Pretty fucking good, man. For a Pokemon stream, it was actually quite good. Um, so I was good for happy. a Pokemon That's stream. What I'm really happy about. Chill streaming is welcomed and people still want it, even though Elden Ring is so in demand. And yes, there were people there who were like, "Man, I." Wish also, I don't. I don't know what chill streaming is supposed to be as as a variety of streaming. Just low effort and boring. This is the actual selling point. But there was a good amount of supportive people, people engaging the stream. And saying we want chill content. Hey, big ups to right. Paypig yeah. Destroyer for the four months okay. of support. That's right. a massive well, amount of months. Who says, uh, big ups, love your streams. I gotta suggest big ups, I love your membership, dude, and your you comment. It makes like me feel good. So alert. Made the following suggestion. Every night I post up what suggestion we got? Twitter. But I want DSP Gaming. Oh, you son of a bitch. Are you going to post a daily community post? For everything. Streaming. On to me a video. Yo, for real. Right? For real. I'm looking at the, the transcript right now. For real. He's going to post daily schedule community post. The thing that people are irritated about on YouTube. So, starting tonight. And Fuck. Please, let me know if I forget. You can't escape this tonight, guy. Not only am I going to post my schedule up on Twitter. I'm also going to post it up as a channel announcement on the community tab of DSP Gaming. So we're gonna post it everywhere. This disgusting fucking white background black text default text schedule is gonna be everywhere. And I'm gonna start doing this 
every night. Fucking sucks, every man. Night. Every day. Every day. You're gonna get a community message from him, from Phil, and you're gonna get six fucking videos a day. And if you don't like them, you can go and fuck yourself. But you also need to be subscribed if you wanna chat in his chat. And you have to be subscribed so he can reach his sub goal of 200k by his birthday. So daily, you're gonna get... What is this? One, two, three, four, five, six videos and a community post, and you're gonna fucking love it because I say so. Want to know what's Phil doing tomorrow and the rest of the week? You could go to Twitter if you want, and there's twenty-five thousand people plus who follow me over there. But also, and ironically, I I still have absolutely no idea what he's gonna play like on a day by day basis. Uh, until I actually see his announcement on YouTube or his stream. Well, who can just follow me on DSP Gaming and get the information there? I'm wondering if this is going to help. And actually, people will be less confused. and It'll be a little bit more engagement with those posts. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm going to start doing it tonight. I'm already typing up the whole schedule for Twitter. What's preventing me from just copy pasting that onto the DSP Gaming's community chat tab every night? Absolutely. Yeah, why would you do oh, that? You, they, they can't fucking escape you, man. You're not the only person people watch on YouTube. Even I have like, what? I don't know, a couple of 68? What is this? Like 80 channels that I'm subbed to? Imagine you get a dude fucking spamming six videos in a post every day. What happens? You I'm can't fucking run bad. away. And and the, the lives are also a thing. And see how it goes, all right? So tomorrow... Uh, podcast, and he's still of course on twitter he gets like 10 likes that's what pisses him off because he has twenty thousand people following him gets 10 likes on his shitty schedule tweets even less than that and he can see nobody gives a shit that's why he wants to go on youtube and get 60 likes because it's fucking dark side phil nobody cares about his fucking posts and on youtube there's no excuse why he can be getting less likes because he got a lot of people look at this 60 likes 70 likes 50 likes this means so much for phil i'll talk a little bit about so you guys can see it you guys can see it i'm gonna spam everything you should send people actual newsletters on an email and should make them uh sign up for your email the news tomorrow's big ups cornbread for the sub i forgot to say this two minutes ago because i like the game the game that grows on me every time i play i like it a little more um last time around we actually did some optional side content to end the stream so maybe this you should do some optional side content in real fucking life, dude. Go get some friends or something. Just focus on story. Do some like actual romance missions, some fucking optional stuff, some crafting so you get your skills up, some fucking reading books in real life and shit. Yeah. We'll see. Bottom line is with this uh, game. The bottom fucking it, line. Game that I feel like if it all it was all if all you were playing at once was this game, this game could be an 80-hour playthrough that's actually chill and fun. Okay. But sadly, it came out in between sandwich between all these other new releases oh and this uh, just fucking Final stupid excuse king of fighters and then right after Wait, that, what is he talking about horizon so i really feel like if this game had come out yeah like, horizon maybe i would have put more time into it and to do side content what? Like, but as of right now sadly i hate to say it um people just don't really want it that much out of all the major playthroughs i'm doing this is the one with the least viewership and engagement Oh yeah, okay. So it's a it's a wage quit. It's a view quit. I don't know how that's that's called. Engage quit. That's the new thing. Cuz it it has low engagement, so it's going away. I'm gonna but it's not going away. It's not confirmed. It is just uh, implied that it could be going away. Playing it. I'm not giving up on it. I really like I'm not giving up. But yeah, uh I'm probably not going to be spending an exorbitant amount of time on side content if I happen to happen upon a mission that looks like it's interesting. The engage quit. Character, someone who I recognize or seems interesting, maybe. But for the most part, I'm probably just going to be focusing exclusively on the story to get through the game this month. Okay? So, continues tomorrow on the mainstream and tomorrow night. Skyrim After Dark returns. And now I'm really excited for that because we've been having so much fun with it. Now it's been almost a week since I played it. Um, I know we're in the midst of so much stuff. We went into solitude. We had a bunch of quests that opened up. Oh solitude. my god, you should go into solitude in real life. I mean, he already is in solitude. He's literally a hermit. Literally a hermit. Literally. He goes out like once a week. And it's like, you hear about it like it's the worst thing he had to do. I had to go out, you guys, and fucking eat a burger. And pay my bills somehow outside. They're all paid outside. The fuck? 
Yeah, it's called uh, Skyrim After Dark because it's the late stream. And he wants to, I guess, brand it as something, which is a good idea. It's not a bad idea, but his shit is not very brandable. As we transition, brilliant transition, I'm gonna stroke myself over this. Uh, as we transition into a little channel called KO Gaming, uh, which was a channel that DSP made to sort of uh, rebrand himself. And you weren't supposed to know that it was Phil, but in the beginning of every video, he says, Hello everyone, it's Phil on behalf of KO Gaming. And some of these I've seen, of course, I'm not going to watch the Homefront video for like the 15,000th time. Or the No Man's Sky. I've seen his first, like what, top five videos. And uh, I would rather see something else. Now let's scroll down a, a little bit. These are his most uh, liked, well-appreciated, viewed videos. And as you can see, the there is a pattern that emerges of terrible thumbnails clickbait titles, as we have the worst game, unfinished mess. Of course, this is a thing that, that you kind of do. It's a thing that is done. I can't blame them. Uh, the thumbnails are bad, though. I fucking hate them. Thumbnails are ass. Then we have uh, Operation Raccoon Shitty Umbrella Core Review. I don't know which one to, uh, to specifically look at. And if it's a bad game, let's see the Mass Effect review. I don't know why not. Now, it's even the feedback on this, uh, as you can see from the like to dislike, the feedback on this is kind of mixed because obviously Mass Effect Andromeda, when it came out, got panned by basically every person in life that played it. And it was like, dude, this looks like ass and plays like ass and it's kind of ass. But then DSP made a review hating on it and it's kind of split. So, yeah, let's dive in. This is going to be a part of today's stream. Then we're going to go watch him live. But when he starts playing fucking Horizon, I'm going to clock the fuck out. Because that shit is terrible. And if you're still here, then you got clickbaited by the thumbnail, which has Horizon on it. Ironically, there won't on, be any everyone? Horizon Phil in this. here, and welcome to KO Gaming no, here. for my review of Mass Effect Andromeda. You know the Mass Effect series has been... This is, by the way, by his words, high production value, edited, style... Uh, very good quality content. This is good quality for him. It's actually good quality. In one of my favorite franchises of the previous console generation, and my playthroughs of those first three games ended up getting me the major notoriety that I have on YouTube and allowed me to eventually do this as a job. So it's been- a And we, we start with a fucking background segment. Yeah, you guys, I'm doing YouTube for a job. Drop a like. Pretty good series for uh, me. Yeah, and the fake voice is fucking terrible. It's not the worst in this one, but I think the Overwatch uh, tips, the Overwatch tips video, I'm going to go through this super quick because I've watched it before and Tevin watched it before and basically everybody watched it before. It's a terrible, shitty ass fucking video. But his voice, I think in the beginning, when he was like, oh, hear my thoughts on what I thought. <laughs> What is <laughs> he legit says it. Hear my thoughts on what I thought. What's going on, everyone? Feel yeah, there it is. Gaming. And if you're anything like me, this past week you've probably been playing quite a lot of the new competitive first-person shooter from Blizzard. And, and this was the video that he wanted to clickbait people. He wanted to do the the thing that people do when shit comes out, and you make a video about it, making tips, and you make it in this exact way. This is a checklist video. It's a, an exact checklist of how you make those kind of videos. You put the thumbnail, you put the title, you edit it in this exact way, you structure it in this exact way. And he flopped. He flopped because he was ass and he was cloud chasing. Entertainment Overwatch. Being the very first first person shooter from this AAA game development studio, people have been absolutely hype about it for months. It's finally here. And so I decided to actually sit down and take some time to record some of the best tips and advice that I can give to people who maybe- And this is basically a first impressions video, except when it's not, because he also has a first impressions video on Overwatch. New to the game? And this whole video is basically explaining every character and telling you what their ultimate skill is. There is no actual tips. For
from a guy who's supposed to be experienced. And maybe to people who are playing it, but need a little bit of help trying to figure out how to play with certain characters, out of which I'd probably say 10 out of the 21 characters in the cast I've had a decent amount of time to play with, and I think I've learned enough that I could lend you a little bit of knowledge and experience. So without further ado, here we go. Uh, big ups, Ludwig World Order for the sub, dude. Thanks for helping us get to 2000. For Overwatch. Helping us. No, it wasn't. Off, okay, so this wasn't uh, the th my thoughts on what I thought, which was one of my favorite DSP moments. But imagine that I showed it to you and you agreed with me. Okay, now let's go back to the other shit. Because that Overwatch video is, is garbage. When it comes to Let's Plays. When it was announced two years ago that Mass Effect Andromeda would be continuing on with the franchise, but taking on new characters in a new part of the universe, although you would have some familiar faces in regards to the races and such, you would basically have a brand new cast that you would be following, I thought, wow, this is a great idea. In particular, after the very negative reception that the ending of Mass Effect 3 got, this is a good way to kind of reboot the series and allow everyone to continue on with a franchise that they really enjoy and a lot of people hold close to their hearts. And then the game released, and all of a sudden, it seemed like all of that hype and expectation and the love of that franchise was kind of met with horror, disappointment, shock, and just a feeling of ultimate kind of emptiness. Actually, I haven't really paid attention if he edited out the snorts or not. I didn't really pay attention, if I gotta be honest. Gameplay ...that this game was made by a completely different development team. Yeah, he is kind of doing the nerd crew. The, the fucking nerd crew. I've... I've... Uh, I've played it way before in the streams. It was a ton of fun. When we were talking about the the loot boxes, the nerd crew is like a parody of of shills, basically, like a literal parody of shills. And he's doing that shit. This whole channel was the shill channel. He wanted to to make a blank slate of just exactly what it says here: delivering great gaming's greatest hits. Maybe you can't even see it. A uh, montages, countdowns, and reviews. This is what he wanted to do with this channel. Just make it this but he had no mm, no motivation outside of money and he had no talent creativity or any kind of passion for what he wanted to do so he ended up being one of those absolutely generic fucking channels that are completely irrelevant and of course in featured channels he has just his own other channels because he's the only guy on youtube nobody else exists than the first trilogy now in a lot of cases that's okay you can look at franchises like halo that have been transferred from one team to another and in a lot of cases people like that those series are continuing even though they do have a different feel to them but the well, things that I'm talking about aren't necessarily design change choices but more just polish refinement animations i mean it's pretty bad when you have a new game that comes out to continue a series and the animations of the characters faces aren't even as good as those of the original trilogy that yeah, was so character, 10 years ago the, the faces were so bad there's a lot and there's this like the like he's pulling out a fucking blunt and the animations of the character and he made his character look like phil as well <laughs> He makes all his characters look like himself with the shitty goatee and like plastic hair. Good as those of the original trilogy <laughs> Holy episode fuck. 10 years ago. There's a lot to be decided. And again, I'm pulling out that blunt. In Mass Effect Andromeda. And even though the game developers attempted to pass. Yeah, this is supposed. This kind of looks like Kanye more than it looks like Phil. It looks like a white Kanye West. With his goatee and these eyes, it's exactly a white Kanye. You can screenshot this. <laughs> okay. Sound good. Match this game midway through the month of its release to try to say that they were going to fix issues. Sadly, by the time that I completed my 30 hour playthrough, I just felt empty and disappointed. In this review, I'm going to outline some of the things that are different from Mass Effect Andromeda and the original trilogy. Some are good, some are bad. Yeah, there are no snorts in this. My biggest disappointments snorts, belches, they're all gone. You check out, in particular, if you're already a fan of the franchise and are wondering if it's worth your time. Andromeda takes place in a different location and time period. In all his fucking videos, is just like a... It, it's a recreation of videos that already exist. He watched one generic review and he does exactly that same thing according to a checklist. There's not 1% of creativity or originality or taking risks. There is zero risks in anything that he did on this channel. It was all just... The, the generic thing that you know is absolutely non-problematic and it's just a thing you can post and get some fucking views. 
period. Groups of different races from the Mass Effect franchise, including humans, Salarians, Krogans, Turians, and Asari, have loaded up into ships called Arks in a last-ditch effort to save their races, as they've basically thrown in the towel on the Milky Way and are looking to move across the galaxy and repopulate in a different area. And so the game opens with all hell breaking loose, things aren't going to according to plan, you have to basically try to find out what the hell is going on after waking up from cryo sleep, things are not as you expected them to be when you awaken, and after a whirlwind two hour intro, you finally come to the main What? Plot it's, the it's not a... You are the is it a two hour intro? Has to find a way it's not, I've to played the first like races, three, four hours, there's no two hour intro. Marks of other alien races that are lost in space because they were so <laughs> Bro, imagine out of all the people that they could have cryogenically frozen, they freeze Phil. They freeze the SP and he wakes up in like 600 years on a spaceship. Post to show up at one point and they weren't there Whoa. when you woke up. You also have to find <laughs> planets for these races to populate and eventually find a way to set settle outposts on those planets to get a foothold in the galaxy so that you can start to raise crops and repopulate etc etc the premise of the game is quite interesting and right off the bat you're what kind of driving is this very similar what to the kind of driving is this <laughs> he drives over everywhere it's just he's driving over cliffs he's driving over objects what is this garbage this you this is your highlighted gameplay very similar to the original Mass Effect. It's like his Forza playthrough is just running into the side of the road and, and driving off-road. Trilogies are just having these multi-branched... <laughs> and there is a, I guess, like a conspiracy something, I guess, that he can't actually see that well. His TV, because the TV is actually kind of far away from him. And yeah, he doesn't wear any glasses. And the gunner glasses, they don't have like uh, an actual lens on them. They're just you know, glasses for, for a computer. Options which allow you to kind of say things in a different way and experiment with maybe the personality of your character. You're also going to have many different characters you're going to be interacting and recruiting to your team. As the Pathfinder, you're going to be going throughout the galaxy and you're going to need a wide variety of talents from your crew in order to be able to survive both in combat, but also in the social situations and things like that. Yeah, you made a, a social... Going throughout the galaxy and you're going to need a wide... Oops. Notice with maybe of talents from your crew in order to be able to survive both in combat but also in the social situation. So 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 so. Yeah. <laughs> There's also a unique. Bro, you can edit this. You, you remember, you can edit this video. You can actually do a second take that doesn't have the zero 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 in it. About a side content that comes out of that cast. Uh, fun. This is high production value content. So it's pretty much very similar. Yeah, it's, it's all one take. It's one take, Phil. And this, uh, according to him, took him several hours to assemble. This low energy, low effort, 20 minute fucking video. The original Mass Effect. It's just like one or two or three takes at most. Franchise in that regard. Andromeda still remains mainly a cover-based shooter with RPG elements, but the combat is probably going to be about half of what you're going to spend your time in, so let's talk about what's different between Andromeda and the original Mass Effect trilogy. First of all, yes, there is a cover-based system, but you can no longer snap to cover by pressing a certain button. Instead, it's an automatic mechanic where when you move towards something that's supposed to be cover, your character will automatically get behind it. You can then peek over it to fire or even blind fire, and then you can move from cover to cover using a certain... Wow. There's also are, are we seriously explaining mechanics that have been here since the stone age basically it allows you to dash back it's like the last 15 years super high so that you have a lot more maneuverability in combat bro it's mass effect forward. yeah however ultimately well, now he can he can jump a lot kind of fall short mostly because the automatic cover based system is wonky it doesn't always oh, a script work the way that you probably not a script for this maybe some bullet points and outlines but not an actual script that's not a script he's reading no and there's no sometimes way sometimes you want to get behind cover and you can't you just won't get behind it for some reason like get back there god damn it and Whoa. then you do it sometimes you'll think something's cover and it ends up not being good enough for cover and you end up getting your shield shot apart before you even get a single shot off i strongly recommend if you're going to play this game to go into the tech development she would have killed it though with um kind of a, a day one reviews i guess something like acg or a game ranks with like the before you buy kind of stuff because that shit comes out day one and all the day one review like let's see if this guy will recommend the game type of views they all go there that's why 
I, I guess those videos are hot. This this would have been an okay video for that, for that instance where it's this. But if it's a review that comes out after the fact, like weeks or months after the game comes out, you need to do much, much, much better than this. This is not, not even there. It's not even like ACG level stuff. Because ACG, before you buy, worth a buy, all those channels that pull out stuff day one or at least in the first few days since the game comes out, those they're they're doing well and they have like 10 minute videos that is just a brief review of the game to see if you're gonna like it or care about it or whatever just a generalized thing and he could have gone for that but he's too lazy to, to play shit on day one or that would imply he would also get review copies and shit like that no he, he doesn't do those yeah he's too real for that your wall that you could put down to basically create artificial cover anywhere in the game because the cover system is so damned wonky and frustrating this is going to make the game a much better combat experience for you ultimately i used it and basically never really had that much of an issue with cover until a few moments where enemies were literally would spawn behind me or to my sides in which case i would just get shot and executed cheaply from behind and there's not much you can do about that there's that's nothing i could do they play design right there that's um, that's in his review sometimes there's nothing you can do uh i did everything correct comes to the actual gunplay it's pretty much identical or very close to the original it's series, bad but one major gunplay thing in this shit is so bad is the ability to control your ai teammates and that's not an exaggeration you can no longer control your team it's not an exaggeration kind of or anything which what? is kind of the, some of the original fun of the original fun no longer <laughs> do you have one person that was a fat fun exaggeration you can no longer control your team to do fun. combos or anything which was kind of the, some of the original fun of the original fun. no longer can you have one person throw out a biotic and stun all the enemies while bro and this the, the worst thing about this is there are people that make like four to six hour long videos that are scripted like top to bottom scripted and this guy wants to be up there he wants to be up there in the level of shit, in the recognition he gets from the community, in the clout, in the profits. He wants to be up there with those people that make four-hour edited stuff. Like Joseph Anderson or Noah Caldwell Gervais or all those people that are actually put in effort to analyze stuff and think about stuff before they run their mouth grenade that blows up and does area of effect damage while you unload your your right no into let's them. do this no, instead just basically three and there's just some raw gameplay running around you got a raw gameplay does its job when most of the time sadly it doesn't i've had times when my ai controlled teammates were just firing into walls or waiting to you didn't even bother to record like 10 minutes of actual gameplay without the camera so it would be more better production value and when there's a reaction that he wants to make, then you can cut to the actual stream footage and show us, because that's what people do. And that way you're going to make people think, hey, this guy has a stream, I can go check it out. They're so you're doing yourself a promotion and also highlighting something fun that happened. And you're giving an example. Abilities and then walking behind cover and trying to use it and missing completely. It really is sad that the AI is so bad in this game and that you cannot do combos anymore. Uh, you can kind of direct them where to go and point to different objectives or tell them to focus on an enemy. But ultimately, that big control that you felt you had in the original trilogy is gone. And that's just a really odd design choice. Now, the other major thing about combat that's different is that you have the ability... I don't think they made a lot of choices. It was more like like mistakes in the game through a craft a lot of those things they so did with this game is just mistakes and this fucking with a with a crafting system like this uh, i'm gonna rant about not fill with the game you can't have menus that look like this this is a terrible ass fucking menu so confusing so ugly and so just bad uh, all right rant is over and or uh, resources throughout the game that you can use to develop various different sniper rifles oh yeah the the rambling definitely puts off the new people and makes them confused because you could be rambling uh in saying like if you guys i don't know if you remember a channel called downward thrust and this is a brief delayed delayment and this was one of those channels that basically all he does is regurgitate the popular opinions about gaming uh and he was kind of warmish a couple of years ago and then efap talked about it the podcast and they made fun of him made him a meme then i don't know what happened but this guy basically just sits there and does basically what phil does but in a, in a way that is kind of better and will i i don't think confuse you but will throw you off it will kind of 
I don't know. You you might believe him or whatever. It's just kind of like that guy. What? All 2042. The game seems to punish you for wanting to play solo and aggressively. And, and, and it's like, uh, yeah, never mind. It's like he makes videos for people that he doesn't expect them to actually listen and pay attention. Shotguns. And when you right listen and pay attention, you figure out that all he's saying is shit that you've read on Twitter already. And shit that is just common sense. Capabilities and some example. actual nonsense. For example, maybe one will use your shields, but it has double damage. Maybe one has big penetration. Uh, I've had one that actually had unlimited ammo, but you had to wait a little yeah, bit. Yeah, your wife should have big penetration. a little bit of variation. And ultimately, if you're into the gunplay so much, you want to develop the best weapon, you will find some overpowered things in the game, like automatic shotguns. But for the most part, it ends up feeling... Oh, like he went on EFAP? That was funny. Shooter fair and shit is funny. I should look it up. to do those combo abilities with your teammates... They made fun of him so much. Taken away that one unique thing about the Mass Effect combat. Well, did he say something? Like really did I miss? Third person shooter fair and removing the ability to do those combo abilities with your teammates seems to taken away that one unique thing about the Mass Effect combat that felt interesting and different. I don't know what the hell they were thinking. Well, for many, it's really nice about transition when it comes to the Max Effect franchise. But the Max Effect. The uh, by the way, I think if he used uh, a software that wasn't because uh, I'm pretty sure he edited his shit with Premiere Pro. I'm pretty sure if he used something much easier to use, like, a I don't know, a Camtasia Studio or whatever, because I, I use this sometimes, uh, he would probably make better stuff because Premiere Pro can be very scary to boomers i guess and he's definitely a boomer space mechanic so, yeah. that makes it an interesting game franchise so how is that fair and intro the classic so, max effect can be games after your two or so hour <laughs> intro you're going to be able to go out and explore many different planets in the galaxy it starts off with three main ones of which you can explore in any order and they vary greatly one is kind of a ice planet one is more of kind of a desert like planet one is a jungle yeah it's those I planets that are really easy to map out because it's it's a if it's a desert then it's all sand and if it's ice then it's all just ice go to these planets and you explore you're going to be very able to nice find different it's a very high effort thing oh and this tours. is a jungle hey oh, it's it's just trees that i lost please go find out what happened to these people that are missing and ultimately sadly it feels a lot like many other open world games as of late where it's just a bunch of kind of generic grinding style game generic it necessarily add to the plot or anything significant in the game, it's just meant there to be busy work so that they can say that they tacked on more hours of gameplay to the total playtime of the game, even though it's really not necessary. And it's, uh, there's the thing that he does in his reviews that people don't usually do because they want to be taken seriously and I guess build a name for themselves. But what he does is, instead of just simply criticizing the game, he needs to take it one step further and just call out the developers talk about the developers and he gets when he gets mad and passionate he gets toxically passionate so it it makes him look bad all the time uh yeah. he just wants to make it as personal as possible when he shits on somebody it has to be as personal as possible that's why it's a fucking developers man if he knew their name they, he would name drop them again Ultimately, all the planets in Mass Effect Andromeda end up feeling empty because the vast majority of them is empty space where you're going to be driving in your vehicle, the Nomad, which is very reminiscent to the vehicle, the Mako from the original Mass Effect game. You're going to eventually run into some outposts where you may fight some generic enemies or whatever, but for the most part, you're really just driving around doing quick objectives here and there, and then you're driving back across but the dude, map. dude, it's open and world. One of the weirdest things about it means it's good. ...is that there's certain areas that allow you to solve Sudoku puzzles in order to progress. Oh yeah, this shit was of that this shit was so bad. I hated. They literally couldn't involve yeah. them their own puzzle system. They had to steal one that was blatantly it's already a steal existed. one. Yes, this this boner for originality and creativity, which are very I guess subjective terms. Game. That's why he likes to use it so much. Well, this game doesn't do anything fucking new. What's well, Mass Effect Andromeda? There's been like four games before it. If that Three games. Show you and a the, bunch of DLC. Of experience of this game development team, I really don't know what does. But ultimately, even though they added all of this... Fucking terrible. They stole Sudoku. 
Sudoku is a copyrighted thing, I guess. Affecting Andromeda, it ends up feeling Fucking very Sudoku. shallow and very empty. There's like, so many uh, side DSP. missions you don't know which one. And shallow like his wife. Something that's worthwhile, or something that ultimately is going to be like, like, like his head. I'm doing, and in fact, that's what happened. And to his me. bank like, account. I started exploring the planets, and I got to the ice planet. I did the vast majority of side content, only to find out that about 80 percent of it was completely unnecessary. Didn't give me anything significant to advance Yo, my party. Yo, side content is unnecessary. For my characters <laughs> really this guy never story. stops it was just me never stops and this is an edited high quality video it's not just a rant on this planet or nonsense skipped over and missed nothing and that's the sad thing about mass effect andromeda dude You're the side stuff is completely optional You're holy saying, shit i hate it 80 hours long but in reality the only meaningful content in the game would add up to maybe around 20 hours and the rest of it is all just boring grinding crap that's found in many other open world games of the modern era this kind of sucks. A lot of days, it's it's quantity over quality, and I don't agree with that. Oh, you don't agree with it? You have sixty thousand videos on YouTube. I would, I dare to differ. I beg to, whatever. You know what I mean? That has a good cast, that phrase. A main plot that you're gonna enjoy, and maybe some side missions like the original Mass Effect trilogy. You don't need to have all this padding. And all but it's okay when he does it because he's gonna make it an analogy for his case. Man, I need to do it because I pay my bills. And if I don't spam videos, if I make only one video, I can't pay my bills. This sucks. But that's not what they were going for with Andromeda, and that's oh. one of the major disappointments. And the so guy should be live soon. Andromeda, then. Does that make up for the grinding open world content that... No, are you kidding me? It's terrible. Well, the main plot of the game can be beaten in around 8 to 10 hours. If you just focus on those main... Oh, no, he has 80 viewers. He's not starting anytime soon. Can be run right they need to be like, <laughs> like 200 or some shit. The story is very reminiscent to that of Mass Effect 2. I won't tell you how because I obviously don't want to spoil the plot line. But you will be running into many different uh, comrades who you'll recruit to your team. And yes, you'll have different situations and plot mysteries and things that will be answered by the end of the game. And yes, of course, there's a cliffhanger ending because they want to try to make a sequel... All of this is to be expected from the Mass Effect franchise. But one of the things that's pretty disappointing is that you only encounter one new friendly race and one new enemy race. And that's it. There's only two new races in Mass Effect. Yeah, they went into a literally different galaxy. And there was two new races in the new galaxy. The Andromeda, and for a series that's supposed to be rebooting in a new part of the galaxy to only run into two different new kinds of aliens is kind of unexpected and kind of disappointing. I thought, hey, we're... Yeah, his character does look like Steven Seagal a little bit. Kind of younger Steven Seagal. Run into tons of new stuff. And in reality, you don't actually do that. Now, what about your crew? One of the main focuses of the Mass Mass Effect franchise are the loyalty missions that allow them to become friendly with you and unlock better abilities, and of course the ability to romance certain crew members as well. Well, all of that is present in Mass Effect Andromeda, although I do have to Speaking say, of Kim, a lot of these there was something that I wanted to show a couple of days ago, but my laptop was against it. This is my favorite clip from Steven Seagal movies, because he has this thing where he likes to adopt i guess gangster language if i would say it like that but take a look at this this is um your run-of-the-mill steven seagal movie this is when when people compare dsp to steven seagal this is exactly what they mean it's exactly what they fucking mean they took her <laughs> i'm sorry to hear that because now I will snatch every motherfucker birthday. <laughs> I, I will snatch every motherfucker birthday. <laughs> the fuck was this even supposed oh, to me? Go to a certain base and save a family member. Oh that's my god. Have. Oh, go to a certain base oh. and save contact that's in trouble. Oh, go to a certain base and you see my point? It's all kind of the same deal. I will While snatch every motherfucker games, birthday. The were varied. In this game, they're almost all identical. And that's a really sad thing that they couldn't really... <laughs> it means he's going to kill him. I guess it's an expression to snatch a birthday is to kill somebody, I guess. Formula, and it... But it's like he has this thing that he, it, he needs to say it in a hood accent. For some reason, honestly, just feels like <laughs> I guess it's cooler. Ability rather than like your snatch every motherfucker birthday. 
As for the romancing, yes, it's present. A and nice dialogue manual. through the game that you can use to unlock more familiarity with your characters and get their backstories. Some of them you even get to meet Let's their family Williams members. Let's get Williams chat cool. on the screen before yes, we no begin. No matter what sex you are, you can have a bisexual relationship, a homosexual, a heterosexual, a trisexual relationship, if you may be, with multiple different alien races. However, once you lock into one relationship, just like previous Mass Effect games, a you trisexual can relationship. <laughs> so you finally get to love he's by. He's by. He's by. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And you have to do another play totally another relationship. Bye. Therefore, I strongly recommend that you're careful about who you romance because if you end up romancing the wrong person, you may end romance up girl that play always and have to romance girl the romance spot. cat. Ultimately, the plot and the, <laughs> the missions with the characters, the loyalty and the romancing, it's there. It's not bad. I actually thought they could have done way worse with the main plot and this kind of stuff with the characters, which is why I made it a point to actually complete it before I finished the game. But ultimately, I do think that the other games, in particular. Mass Effect 2 by Two. far did the plotline and the loyalty missions much better than this game. <laughs> and again, when you're rebooting a franchise, uh, you're trying to do better she wasn't married the back then. This was in 2017. I, I don't even think Panda had left at this point. Sure, and that's a but with Panda, he didn't mind doing uh, point stuff in games, I guess. Now there is a multiplayer doing the nasty. Andromeda. However, it feels ultimately tacked on it's and doing not the really nasty. interesting. All it is is you teaming up with a couple other people over the internet to fight endless hordes of AI that come at you. Once you succeed, you unlock some in-game resources for crafting and the like. And ultimately, it's not very interesting. It seems like it really is just tacked on there to say that there's multiplayer in the game when it really isn't a focus and doesn't add anything. Yeah, they shouldn't have done this at all. I do have it's to absolutely say no reason for it. For is that even though I played the game for 30 they couldn't even hours, do the normal game properly. Content. I found that this new crafting system to make weapons and actually it's to upgrade your vehicles so you can climb easier in this open world ended up being underwhelming because you never seem to have enough resources to get the good stuff that you want. It almost seems like they want you to play this crappy, repetitive, meaningless multiplayer in order to get enough resources to get the good stuff in the game. I didn't do so. I only played it twice. Once it crashed after 45 seconds, and the next time I was so bored I quit halfway through the match, and I never played it again. So ultimately, the multiplayer is... Oh, so he bored. The game doesn't need to be there and doesn't even really <laughs> bored to quit about in the review. And so at the end of the day, and you can hear the clicks. You can hear the fucking clicks. He didn't even edit this. Like the actual audio. You can hear him clicking record. Actually clicking stop record. Kind of a pale fucking silly, game. like actually. And he wanted to have a channel like the big guys that were doing shit like this. He wanted to be up there. The original Mass Effect trilogy. And instead he's up there on the Mount Rushmore of lol cows. And you may say, well, it's made by a different dev team anyway. What's all the hoopla? He's right about? next Ultimately, to Christian. I think even like, though quite I've literally. a lot of negative so far in this review, I haven't hit upon the thing that most people absolutely hate Okay, DSP is going to start the soon. why this game is almost Alert. the laughing stock of the internet over the past month. Ball it's Alert. one of the most unpolished gameplay experiences I think I've ever seen. The facial animations are god-awful. I mean, way worse than the original. DSP's facial too. animations are terrible too, so I don't know. Don't even move when what authority he's speaking with. They're staring in the space, so they're bugging out. They don't look human. They look freakishly deformed or weird. <laughs> There's really no kind of like Phil looking in that regard. At least there were a few good-looking characters in the previous Mass Effect games. I don't know what happened in this one. A lot of characters just seem like their faces are completely paralyzed, like they had a freaking stroke or something. Hey, we get a stroke reference. Least, even after EA tried to patch this game. Game he would said, know. Oh, it's fixed. It really wasn't. It still looks really bad. It's jarring during a cutscene when you're trying to stare at someone's face, and it looks like a poor animatronic from like the. It's a small world ride at Disneyland, rather than a, a nice to stroke reference. I don't get what happened there, and still, there's been no real explanation as to why the facial animations are so bad. But there's also the fact that this game is chock full of bugs. I'm talking characters launching into the sky like Superman. Characters being sucked through walls. Massive audio glitches like. Like your character talking like he's wearing a helmet when he's not it's just jarring because there was some sessions where i would only play for two to three hours and i would have a span of an hour of crazy ass glitches back to back to back to back just leading to the, everyone watching along with me on the stream kind of laughing hysterically saying is this they were laughing i'm, I'm sure they were supposed to take this but yeah the glitches on this listen, terrible not to say it's fucking that previous a bad experience mass didn't have bugs the original trilogy did in fact mass effect one was a buggy mess where there were a few game breaks glitches that could make you replay upwards of an hour of gameplay if they happen but 
This is a new back to back to back to back to back to back to back. Like Drake. Hey, we, we're we're going live. We're going live with the guy. This guy. All right, we are going with the guy. Hey, this is a new intro. Hey, this can't be for real. What the fuck is this? Matter of fact, kind of guy, uh, you know, Yo, legit, what the fuck is wrong with this? Challenges to the ball over the map. He's gonna crash now. I've seen this bit of gameplay. Yeah, he crashed! It's another troll. It can't even do something that is flattering to him. All of it looks like ass. Intentionally or not. What is happening? Bills day off. Like legit, what the fuck is happening? Oh yeah, that was mostly my day off, you know, like I said. Came home. How how long is this? This is way too long. Always chill with the pill. And it says it twice. It's like top text, bottom text. It's like a meme. A living meme. Let's get to the show in Comic Sans, by the way. This is Comic Sans font. It's a meme font. Fucking nice. What this wait, wait, wait. Was this a Joe Rogan logo? The the DSP Gaming Podcast. Ironically, I made the same shit that, that was called the Raw Beggar Experience. That this show today. Okay, well, welcome to the today fucking show. pre-stream garbage fest. Episode uh, enjoy. Enjoy your stay. Nine, I think, of the pre-stream podcast. I told you guys many, many months ago, like four months ago, not even, that this show because I do it every single day that I stream. Was really going to rack up the episode. I mean, this right? was a stealth kind of like snort, but it still it still you know, came in. Really no it still popped up. A daily talk radio show when you really think about it. Um with the amount of Oh yeah, it's a it's a fucking show. daily radio show. It's, that, it's, it's fucking that fast. I know a lot of people don't realize. Bro. That. And just think in the few months that I've been doing it how different the show looks. Bro, you fucking love yourself. Downs. Are you fucking kidding me? We get a stroke you segment. Today. Like, actually, like, Absolutely. stroking is, is dick, not yeah, a, like a stroke. Feedback, by the way. I definitely like Oh, bro, get, get the fuck out of here. This is bullshit. Um, fucking scam. And uh, Compared himself to a talk show. Yeah, a daily a fucking video, radio show. Personal Who do you think you are? It? Oh, I like this to improve. This, this intro is Fucking joker. Improve this this way or that way. I'm all ears when it comes to improvements. So today's new intro, I hope you guys liked it. It was terrible. Thank you. It was actually terrible. So, and it was really long and, and well, really, really bad. Stream podcast. Today is Wednesday, the 2nd of March, 2022. All right. March is going to be a crazy month because March, we got so many new releases. We're already juggling here on the streams. Um, and I'm very happy that we have gotten back to variety. And what I mean by that is for four straight days. Uh, return to normalcy. Of uh, course, we went back to variety. And did some Pokemon. And but Pokemon did you still play the good. same fucking stale ass boring time. games? What is this variety you're there talking about? There was support. Everything was positive about the Pokemon stream. Of course, the attendance was down from Elden Ring. But I'm okay with that. You know, listen, I am a variety streamer. I like the fact that I only don't only do one thing. I don't only hyper focus on one thing because it's, there's a, a bunch of positives to doing that. All right. First of all, it absolutely first of all, you should burnout. fucking go, you know, and uh, have, blow your fucking many, nose. Many years ago, when I used that's, to be just that's what should be first of all. Worrying about a streaming schedule, um, I used to heavily, heavily play a new release when it came out. Like I'd play it three, four straight days, nonstop, to the point where I'd be playing like in some cases, uh, you know, 30, 40 hours of a game within just a few days of its release. To beat it right away. Yeah, that's the thing successful it. people do. I would pump out that content for YouTube. Or or to not. You don't have to, but have a complete playthrough of the game. They still do it, dude. In asterisks or not asterisks, uh quotations. Asterisks. Because, uh, it was a complete. It was an obelisk. The game. So much content would be left out that the game had available. But my point was just I gotta get through this game to get to the next. Gotta get through this game to get to the next. Okay? Yeah, and you now, were kinda successful back then, then and now you're nobody. You burned out on games. Like Elden Ring. When you got burned out on games, you got more money. Last with the game, I, I'm happy with what they've done with it. Uh, it's I, fucking copium every day, man. It just keeps flowing. We gotta cope every single day that we live. But I played it four days in a row. You know, like 
you get to the point where it's like, I got to do something different just for my sanity, for the sake that I can't constantly have that level of stress uh, and suspense and adrenaline pumping through my veins. I need to have shout out to your buddy to Grug stuff so that we can more relax. And the other thing is, you know, I'm a, now an interactive streamer. It's not just about me playing the games anymore. Hey, let's see if I can make him a different stuff, color. Allows me to have just for fun. We can talk and interact and have a good time. Let's see if I can now make I'm him green. Ring, that is not the case. I tried. In fact, it was funny. Uh, two sessions ago, I was checking out Stormvale Castle, and people were sending me questions. I'm trying to answer, and enemies are coming out of the woodwork, <laughs> shit out of me, and surprising me, and I'm dying. I'm like, guys, you know, I can't do it. I can't maintain a level of conversation with you guys at a game like that. I got to be on my toes. All right. This is a frog I'm stream now. Ring, He's a frog. You know Officially. So I like the fact that we can <laughs> He's play like Shrek. Over. Today we're green. Horizon Forbidden West and Skyrim. We want to talk about different worlds. These games are all completely The Incredible Hulk. <laughs> Hulk. The Jim Incredible Hulk. Right. And they lend themselves oh, nice. to a lot of open conversation and fun. So fun. That's why I like being a variety streamer for sure. <laughs> fun. Thank you to those of you yeah, I can leave them green. I mean, there's yeah, no. I, I, I don't particularly I, I knew there would be care or mind. Already saying, Where's Elden Ring? Why is he filming yeah. Elden Ring? It's the hottest new thing. Elden Ring, Elden Ring, Elden Ring. And actually, one of the major topics we're going to talk about on today's pre stream podcast is. No more Dark Souls, please. Hype, advertisement, no. and game release timing can either make or break an actual video game. Oh, no. Case in point. Here, just, just dive off a cliff the month of february like legit legit no really no no good for game releases or abysmally <sighs> bad for game releases. can i talk about Why? fucking hype because some games made out huge and other games <sighs> completely got mystery are we gonna talk in reality or for you and it all because of hype advertisement and game release timing all right? uh, big ups anything That's gaming for the super chat they why does he grunt like, like that West. Because he is an animal, man. He's unleashed. He can't restrain himself legitimately. What's Horizon? I never heard of it. Really? Right? Really? No one's talking no. about the game anymore. Except no. Except those who decided not to play Elden Ring. Bro. But Elden Ring is a super divisive game. It's a super hard game. Horizon is a chill, fun game for everybody. What is this fucking comparison? Are you actually tweaking? So, that's what I mean. Her, you know, I'm, her he spent, yeah, you're right. He spent a week game. hyping up Elden Ring. It seriously is. Tell me about why people don't care about it. It's better and better the more you play it. The it's literally apples and oranges. And things over the apples and oranges. Better. The environments are varied and very different and interesting. The enemies get more challenging. And guess what? Is Both games are successful. And grinding to it? Yes. Yes, admittedly, there's things to criticize for sure. But at the very same time, it's a really good game that no one's talking about after less than a week. Do you see my point? So we'll talk a little bit about this as my major topic on today's pre-stream podcast, okay? Um, because it's interesting how in modern gaming, how things have changed. Back in the day, if you just put out a good game, that game would be successful. Word of mouth, plus reviews and everything. Do I have a business well, email? Now, I have an email. Ever, and it can literally fly. I guess. In stupid it's on Twitter. And you have to play the game, per se. You really have to be a part of gaming culture. Bro, you know, you're not a part of gaming up. culture. No you're a living meme. Iron is hot, I believe is what they say. Or you strike when the fire is hot. Or strike when the, the fire iron is hot. Is hot. But basically, you Are you going to strike the, right the fire? To have your game come out. Because if you don't, you can be completely lost in the shuffle. All right? But no, not really. Not really. It's not actually happening. Right. It, it might be happening on Twitter. But the people that cared about Horizon went to buy Horizon. People that cared about Elden Ring went to buy Elden Ring. And they're both enjoying it. Or Everyone probably... Chill. Probably. I appreciate that. Today, more Ah, uh, this is fucking terrible. Horizon and it's also a PlayStation exclusive. That's a good point. The fucking Horizon is a PlayStation exclusive. What do you want? People go out and buy PS5s? And then we went and did some optional... I mean, it probably Sony's... Challenging the ball, that's what they want. And that's where we left it off. The tall neck had unlocked the map, and I was going to look around and see is there any. And of course, but man, this is going to be a terrible fucking discussion. Story element. I'll be honest with you guys. Can we have a summary of last night, which uh, the the daily wrap was supposed to be? I, I hate to, I hate this to talk like this in a minute, but here's the deal: Horizon Forbidden West, I really like, but it just hasn't so far caught on with my viewing audience. Um, I played it consistently for a week hasn't caught up with my viewing audience you are talking to them right now 
You are talking to them, my viewing audience. Mr. Well, well, fucking well, well, Fancy yeah, Pants. 12 to 13 hours into it, Fancy right? Pants. Okay. Um, my fucking my viewing friend, audience. Give me a fucking break. Go play video I games. All the Go play games. Go jerk off on camera again. Do something interesting. Stop talking about bullshit. Really get engaged with the content. Um, I like yeah, it. you're boring. Nobody cares if you like it. It's absolutely irrelevant. But in general, people who are, who are attending the streams are saying the game's just not that engaging or fun. It's kind of boring and repetitive. Um, I can't make it be fun. Okay, it's the like, fucking I'm game's fault. With it as I play it, I it's exactly the same situation as the original Horizon Zero Dawn five years ago. I at first was strongly criticizing the game, saying, "Man, this game kind of feels like Tomb Raider. It kind of feels like Far Cry." But the it more was the I gravy played, train, baby, I was making insane I actually amounts felt of like money. Like, dude, the game's <laughs> to this is way too much fucking game money for this lady. Yeah, big ups, uh, hood hustler for the five dollar uh, gravy train. Uh. I'll be honest, guys. I'm enjoying the stream, but support has been slow for some reasons. I don't know what happened, you guys. You guys wanted this, so I don't know. Maybe put the game on hiatus until further notice. As I point to the 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 tip skull, <laughs> big up squid hustler. Thanks for begging on my behalf. It's really hard for me to beg, so I like when other people beg on my behalf. I really like it. Oh, wet. Drop it. Wet, wet, wet. There's a wet snort. Back, I'm getting. It makes me definitely consider a way that I'm going to cover the game. As I just said earlier, I like now in the day now that I'm a streamer. Cover the game. I don't like turboing through games. We're using right? fancy, fancy like man words. Kind of exploring, doing the fun. Would it cover the game? I know that Horizon has a yeah. Sure, I can make him green again. Amount. Why not? Side content. It has. I can. I can even. Grindy, like kill a bunch of. Maybe even give him a green screen. Crafting. If I try variety. hard enough, I can it green screen him out. Which. There, we already did one story based cauldron or other cauldrons that aren't story based. can even do something um, crazier that basically you do a bunch of puzzles in combat and at the end there's a boss fight and then now you can take control of certain animals no actually i can you can hack them and they can become your friends which is cool it's optional but it's fun to do um <clears throat> there's camp takeovers all right now i'm going to be honest about the camp takeovers the one i did sucked ass and actually from what i found out the one i did is one of the bigger ones in the game that there actually are I can actually chroma key his face smaller than the one that I chose to do and oh no he's gone completely production of how to do them and they're not as tedious Whoa, this is so much better more tedious camp takeovers this is so much better so much better you're welcome never end you guys are welcome for this gonna fucking finally wrap up it's like the best thing and then I was like oh but now you have to blow up resources in the camp too so then I had to find those, and then it's finally, fucking like, awesome. finally win after like 40 minutes. Like, geez, can literally take, take off his whole face. Takeover mission. Go away, Phil. You get in, you do a little bit of combat. This is you awesome. This, you're done. You move on. It's supposed to be side <laughs> content, not a giant chunk of your playthrough. You know this is I'm SCP-1651. So, that's the one. Said, um, Maybe I can even it, it actually green screen him, but that's not going to work. It's not going to work with uh, with the generic chroma key. Oh, and now we, we do the inverse. We just get a floating head. Or should I just say, all right, listen, I like the game. I want to get through it, and I don't want this to be a playthrough that goes on forever that no one likes, so maybe I should just do the story. I've actually heard you can just do the story of the game. and this is, this is how DSP with a green screen would look. Challenging, but... Pretty much you could get through the story without money. I guess. Because he's not going to chroma key himself properly. I can totally extend the length of your playthrough a good 20, 30 hours if you just focus on it. But you could beat the story in like 20 hours, 25 hours. Bro, are we still on Horizon? Oh, and he's begging for basically views right now. The extent of the game. Because people aren't enjoying it. And somehow it happens to be today. Today is Horizon Day. Way in balance what I want to do here. Hey, guys. Today might be fucking boring. I have no idea what I'm going to do today. I don't know if we're just going to do story, we're going to do side content, both. Let's see. I just did the tall neck, so the whole match. Uh, big up. Uh, uh, big up Storm Martin EBFG for a super chat. SCP-1651 we'll object class snort clip. After that, we'll reassess. Yeah, they keep those in the most secure facilities all over the world. Side content, or should it just be a turbo mode, try to get through the story? Turbo right? mode. Yeah, just try get into the through the story so you don't bitch about it anymore. Just shut the fuck up, finish the game. Stupid ass. So, We'll see. Let's see what happens, and and uh, we'll go from there. I'll, I'll give you my my thoughts throughout today's stream, and by the end of the stream, I'd love your feedback throughout the entirety of the stream. As you know, this stream will definitely be an interactive one. So, give me your feedback, okay? All right.
Late stream tonight at 6.45 p.m. Oh, Sky my God. Skyrim after. You're going to publish this Skyrim on your thing Skyrim on, on YouTube. One of my favorite Why do you have to mention it every time? Um, And it's fun uh, fun to come back to it every once in a while and relax and chill with you guys. What will we be doing tonight? I don't even remember where we left off. I know we had hit solitude. He doesn't remember. He drank we too much. We started up the Golamai mission, but I don't think we finished it. I think we ended up getting distracted. Hey, now I can actually chroma key player. him you had to, to because he's green, like this. Out. Wow, faceless yeah, Phil. Or the thieves <laughs> the ship this is fucking nice. Field. I could put anything in his place. And then I'm pretty sure we didn't finish it because we got distracted, and there was a a temple that we did. Or maybe mask in the someday I'm gonna green screen him so for real. That, and you know I what's gonna happen? He's gonna have green screen on a detractor stream first before he even has it on his own content he's gonna be on my stream with green screen that's how cool yeah. it's gonna be we're Let's gonna be, be innovative again, another, another and i'll figure out how to do it i'm gonna do it and it's gonna blow your mind doing it and try to get get back on and then it's gonna probably blow up my laptop as well nice chill late night stream what the fuck? where did okay. this go cool. okay now tomorrow thursday yes tomorrow we will return to elden ring Oh, Elden Ring, which everyone just wants constantly, right? Elden yeah. cringe. I'm excited for that because we've already set ourselves up for a great day in Elden Ring. I'm already at the beginning of an optional dungeon that we're going to do. And then I've already learned that there's a, a new area I can go to because I beat Stormvale Castle. There's a new area that's opened up apparently that I can go to. So in a fat to snort. Fat, fat and thick and, and crunchy. To this bridge and cross this bridge. Crunchy a snort. New area that we're gonna try to do. It's a new, apparently a new dungeon and everything. Okay, so somebody in his chat told him that WWE 2K will save his channel, more Pokemon, which I'm pretty sure it's trolling. Those who were not here last night, Arceus. Fuck yeah, yet. so hype. We're almost done with the game. We're now in the fifth and final area of the game. But however, for what I'm to understand, <clears throat> this game, the final area, is the longest and the most challenging. It's the most daunting because there's all these these high cliffs and. A lot of tough Pokemon in the area. So, absolutely, I'm excited for it. But I don't think we're going to beat it, like, right away. I think we may have several streams to wrap up Pokemon Legends Arceus, okay? So, that's going to be Thursday night. Then Friday, we will do another stream of Horizon Forbidden West. And Friday night is the return of Friday Night Fights. That's why... That's white. That's not white. It's right. That's right. And white does not mean right. What? <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? Blah, 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 blah. All right. All right. That was a, a, try this a bad bit. Friday night is the return of Friday Night Fights, my weekly old school throwback Street Fighter session. There. I got it out without a tongue tying mess. <laughs> Shout out to your buddy Grug. Shout out to Grug. You see, I got the I Grug on the soundboard because Kate so, Army Watch sent yes. it to me. Old school Street Fighter. I'm excited for this. Listen. King of Fighters 15 was fun while it lasted. Oh, he said it, it white lasted, is right? It lasted a oh, while. Oh, my fucking Six God. Six days. I think it was like four gameplay sessions. He should drop another Kate full slur. It's about time. Um, From the ground up. Online play was terrible. Literally, the connections got dramatically worse within a week. Half the, the player base already quit the game within a week. And then the beta, or the beta, excuse me, the meta. How do you know? Oh, Wait, the game. King of Fighters? It ended up being crap. And I was like, wow, in one week, the brand new fighter fell apart, right? And honestly, Hey, look how, how much I better would... he looks when I sharpen his image. It's so much less blurrier. And you do this within OBS. It, they, it took me like 20 seconds. We the Street Fighter last week, but then we had Elden Ring. So this week, Capcom Fighting Collection, which is going to have Darkstalkers, as well as Hyper Street Fighter 2 Anniversary Edition. And we all know people looks so much better. the hottest, newest version of these games. And so I get the feeling once that collection releases... The 30th anniversary collection will not be played anymore. You know, it's going to end up being dead. So we have a, a few more months. We've got March, April, and May to enjoy the anniversary collection on a weekly basis before the new collection comes out and that kind of takes over for it. So let's do it. Every Friday night, we'll do two hours of old school Street Fighter fun starting this Friday. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I know. Zen Shuriken says, well, recipe Street Fighter 3. That will be the bummer is that games like Street Fighter 3 Third Strike and Street Fighter Alpha 3, they're not in the new collection. And you know the player base is going to end up migrating over. So you're not going to have a lot of competition or any competition in those anymore. All right? And not much you can do about that. 
Admittedly, I Juicy I snort yet again. Strike, but man, it's almost impossible to play at a high level online. Bro, so why are we talking about this? Yes, at the same time, Give me I one reason. Like years that I played this collection that I One reason. Outside of Kim just wanting to fucking ramble for the yeah, sake of it. Anyway, for the sake right? of it. So, it's not a huge law. Uh, can I use an Instagram okay. filter? I don't really have any filters all right, all on right, hand all right, all right, right now. Right. now. Maybe I could. This weekend. I would love to Maybe. tell you guys what I'm doing Saturday, Sunday, but I can't make a promise to you yet. I don't know that my schedule for the rest of the week. I likely will know it by the end of today into tomorrow. Once I have that knowledge, I will relay it to you. If I'm here this weekend, then that means, yes, Saturday will be more Elden Ring paired with <clears throat> Skyrim. Sunday likely will end up being more Elden Ring. Let's be honest here. People are probably going to want more Elden Ring than anything else. Mm -hmm. It'll probably be like Elden Ring and Pokemon or something. Or maybe we'll do Elden Ring and Horizon is the late stream or something like that on Sunday. Okay. This this schedule fetish is killing me. I've never seen a human being with this much managing and this little doing stuff. He just manages everything and when it comes to doing it, it's just complaints and whining and low effort bullshit. All right. What a so sad what fucking guy. Now, a few housekeeping things before we talk about the topic I want to talk about today about the game. What is the topic? Now. Oh, and this is this is gonna be a hot topic i talked about this yesterday it's like apparently that store no one listened so i'm gonna apparently no one listened we're in a new month what the month is march okay apparently no one listened obviously that means that all of our the the gameplay streamer is is what he says apparently no one listened though so they i wanted to shrink they don't have to listen do we hit any of our goals a dumb fucker february? well engagement in february was high it went way up what that means is people like the videos, like the streams, left comments, and in general, the, the everything, the well, actual average view time, overall views, everything on DSP Gaming went up in February. Literally every positive metric you could have, even subscribers went way up. Like every positive metric you look at when you look at the health of a YouTube channel, everything was really good for February. So if anything, as I told you guys, with January being kind of a dead month for releases, the fact that we all talked about engagement so much, you guys really bought into the fact that you want to see this channel. <laughs> you guys up. really bought in. And because of that, you, you guys really fucking bought in. And everything got good. This like, guy sucks so much ass. Finding DSP gaming in search results. Who is telling you this? Game on YouTube, you're like in the top five. Bro, you're the most this irrelevant gamer in life. This is excellent. Okay. However. <clears throat> The one thing we didn't do is hit our members goal. And now it dropped sure. massively. Sure. I mean, it's still the yeah, same as yesterday, sure. but sure. you know what and I mean. That kind of stinks. I'm not going to lie. But at the same time, it's not the end of the world. All right. If anything, from the discussions that we had in February, the issue is YouTube. The issue is not me or my content. People overwhelmingly are saying, we like the content. You're improving. The stuff is getting better. We, Overwhelmingly, we people are saying that, this. Right? Everything has been positive and great. Uh, or if it was, that uh, was how yeah, fucking lame! In February, how right? fucking lame! Right. <clears throat> how fucking but lame! The problem here is YouTube has not come through on any of their promises so far this and year. And it's YouTube's fault. Really it's YouTube's fault. We had a big public announcement that they were going to oh my God. improve things for streamers on the site. Like what? Dramatically improve big by big making you bring in do gifted subs. Stream on YouTube. And to go hand in hand with that, they announced all these improvements, including gifted memberships, improvement to moderation, improvement to monetization options, apparently improvement to things to the chat and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> it's literally just benefit. February, Word, March. Streamers, it's March right now. It just started. These changes that was coming, right? Still not used to it. They did nothing so far. We're two months into the year. They literally have done nothing. They sat on their butts when it came to streaming. Now, I'm sure they were doing other stuff on the site, but they did not come through on any promises in regards to streaming at all. It's like they're just ignoring what they had said, and they haven't actually <laughs> explained when but if, this stuff is coming. Yeah, if, if you say this to DSP and he tells you, dude, next year I'm going to get a green screen and a PC, and you call him out, he's going to say, oh, these stupid motherfuckers, they're shitting on me, it's still March. In the end video. To actually this do is a, a massive pulpathon. Pulpathon. Right you get a pop up message. Interactive. Your, your chat gets highlighted. Same premise here on, on an on demand video. That's supposed to roll out site wide at some point this year, and it hasn't yet. Oh, what? So super so thanks? Things are going on. Super thanks. And <clears throat> He's still obsessed with really super thanks. Tipping a video. 
So people, so, because he convinced himself, and this is going to be how it's going to be from now on. I'm going to pause it, otherwise I'll just never actually comment on anything. Um, he convinced himself that the people watching him on YouTube are actually completely different human beings from anybody else in his chat. So he wants them to have also an outlet to give him money. One a content creator. What a content creator, let me go back. They haven't really followed through with anything big incentive to become a member because you can get these new benefits now that youtube is instituted right or now you can demand these no members services uh, what streams and stuff yeah do in it in general i don't you should do it an overwhelming demand for it i see like a couple dozen oh yeah okay a couple it. dozen I'm sorry but a couple dozen people just don't bro the other people they don't stream. exist maybe i get 10 12 people who would become members if i did a Oh, this sorry son them. of a bitch. But, but he would see one stupid bastard in his chat asking him to play some game or to do something. But it would serve his point that he's trying to make, and he's gonna bring all the spotlight on that guy and on his opinion because he agrees with it. And now there's something somebody told him that is based around, hey, Phil, you should put more effort in your membership content. Oh, that's just a couple of dozen people. Bro, there's no more than a couple of dozen people that are actually real. And the rest of them are fake. It's not insane. They don't exist. They don't write in your chat. They don't say anything. They're not real. They're only subscribed to you and member to you because they're socks. And you don't need those. To completely derail my schedule and hold back. Derail his fucking schedule. Same 400 as we were last month. That's the goal. Is to reach and this, the goal is the same. If we hit it, what's the reward? Well... I'm open to suggestions. We've done multiple rewards that you guys have liked in the past, and we're just not hitting the goal. No, he's gonna do the I same had shit. Emails. I had people saying, "Phil, bring back viewers' choice." This viewers fucking choice. Club. Terrible. A game for you to do a full playthrough. Shitty garbage. Shitty garbage. So he can spend uh, tens of minutes telling you to go vote on stupid ass polls and give you a live update of the polls. And which is in the lead and what he's gonna play and then fucking complain. We didn't hit the goal. I feel like outside of the memberships. So why am I gonna control this? Because YouTube is dragging its feet, right? I'm not. Of course, it's YouTube's fault that his channel is garbage. Say, let's, it's there. You guys know the awesome benefits. Highlight a name in chat and in the comments of videos. A chat crown in chat and in the comments of videos. Using all of my emotes, right? Which is awesome. Uh, getting priority for special events. By the way, I should. This is a, a good opportunity to bring this up. Ask the King. My bi monthly QA show was originally scheduled for this coming Thursday. And That's now we're doing. Table. Yeah, of course. It's, too soon, it's gone. It's too soon. Releasing. People are dying to see new <laughs> coverage of these games. This is Ask the King. This is Ask right. the King. You're watching it right so, now. It happens every day. Now, I have tentatively delayed Ask the King till next week next thursday now what we'll do is next week we'll reassess if i f still feel like it's not appropriate to take time away for asking time away to even do another delay it doesn't have to be the whole stream you can do it in the for an hour this month but i want to do it when it's you can do ask the king right? instead of the podcast what are you doing You're so and then just play games now you're gonna take a whole giant major stream away to do ask the king. oh i hate how how no, I, hear you. I, I agree with you so <clears throat> uh, I hate how impractical this fucking guy is and how irrational his impracticality is because I'm a um, I'm a programmer for my job and it demands from me to be rational and to think in ways that make everything easier for everybody and this guy's just everything in his life that he does is impractical irrational and just wasting more of his time and more of his effort and it's more bullshit Taking it out only the few hundred will be able to get our game into the final poll. It's a good priority, okay? So, yeah, please consider becoming a member, all right? But I'm not going to sit here and harp on it, seriously. And it was funny because yesterday on the pre-stream, I explained. I said, guys, so, so you know, look, we dipped during my day off. Why did we dip? Because if you remember at the end of January, which is 31 days long, right? Yeah, <laughs> I had to remember. Um... Within the last two, three days of January, what happened was people rallied, and they wanted to see us hit the monthly goal. They wanted to see that Game Pass Marathon. So people came on the stream, and they all uh, became members, all in droves. It was like a two, three dozen people became a member within like two days, and then we hit the goal. Okay? That's what happened at the end of January. Um, The end of February, which was early, because February only has 20 Yeah, Coffee days, Man is gone. Guess what? 
There was no rallying. <laughs> no more no gifts. Who rallied? No more gifts. Who rallied? The Man, expired. get get out of here. So I came back yesterday. March yeah. 1st. Oh my God. Phil no. Lost like 30 members. No. 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 Reality. This is fantasy. People the people. There is one guy. January. And technically, how delusional is this guy to convince himself shit like this is real? Still be in, in the month. You know what I mean? But it was such a short month, February, that you can't even really come back from it. It's there's nothing you could do about it. All right. So it's not a big deal. Um. But please consider. Becoming a member if you want to support the channel long term. It's a great way to do it. And I, I appreciate everyone who is a member. And I hope you are enjoying your benefits. I'm giving you as much as I, I can at this point. Um, Hopefully, we'll have some good news, right? Hopefully, YouTube will stop dragging their feet and actually do come through on the, the things they promised. But right now, they haven't, okay? All right. We got that out of the way now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk <clears throat> about the big topic I want to talk about today. And we're going into the big one. Hype advertisement. Hype, advertisement, and game release timing. Okay. He is so fucking dumb, and he's gonna be wrong in, on like a million levels on this. About how crazy February 2022 is gonna be, right? We were talking about, man, what is going on? Why is there gaming overload in February? Why is it that so... Hey, we were on 480p for some reason. ...coming out in one month when normally the time when you would have have all these high profile triple a style release games come out would be the fall and admittedly these last couple of years have been absolutely wacky because coronavirus screwing everything up for everyone COVID. in the world but in particular with game development you know a lot of these game developers are working from home or a hybrid ap approach games are getting pushed back delayed having these unprecedented issues they've never had before in development and yes here we are in a situation where a lot of the games that were supposed to come out in the fall couldn't but Game publishers are like, man, we need to get these games out before the end of our fiscal year, all right? Which is actually March. March is usually the end of the fiscal year for most of these companies. And so they're like, man, we really got to push out games to make big bu big bucks, big money <clears throat> by the end of our fiscal year so we can count it for that year's profits and blah, blah, blah. It's all mumbo jumbo. It's all financial bullshit. It really is. It's stupid. It's for tax purposes. It's for all kinds of shit, okay? But anyway. All these companies decided to push out games within a short period of time. Okay. And so this is a really What about delays though? Look at what about you delays? See directly Pushing out games in a short period of time. No, weren't both of those games delayed? Horizon was delayed, right? At least once. Okay. They want to push them out as fast as they can, right? So is that what he said? At the beginning of February. Doesn't make a lot of fucking actually, sense. You should actually start in late January with Pokemon Legends Arceus, right? A Pokemon game that only came out a few months after a Pokemon game. You might say, what? Yeah, Pokemon had a, a re-release, major re-release, at the end of November that I skipped completely because I knew that Pokemon Legends Arceus was coming out in January and I preferred to play the newer game than the old remake, you see? And a lot of people actually said, why are you doing that? And I said, because it's too much. It's overload. You can't be playing Pokemon, finish it, and immediately play Pokemon again. It doesn't make sense. I've tried doing that with Mario and other games. It doesn't work. People get burnout. All right. So I purposely waited and I played Pokemon Legends Arceus in late January. And thankfully, it's working as a playthrough because I'm playing it balanced with other stuff on late nights as a chill stream. Okay. That's a good thing. But immediately following the release of Pokemon, the next week, we had Dying Light 2 and Sifu. Now, admittedly, Sifu, a small-scale game from an indie studio, actually got quite a lot of hype from social media, didn't have a lot of mainstream advertisement. Did you hear anyone mainstream? Did you see ads for Sifu anywhere? Do you know what I mean? Did you see product placements or anything? Did you see big-time streamers playing Sifu because they were paid to? Bro, no. are you a fucking right. lunatic? Or are you, like, no. out of your fucking mind? So why was this? Why was this? You didn't see big-time streamers play it. Because so, it's a niche game. It's a martial arts, Dark Souls-like fucking roguelike. Yes. Sifu was actually one of the yeah. most popular games I've It's not fucking ever. Horizon, because it's not the best-looking game, and it's not forever. I got the hang of it, and then I absolutely loved it. Seriously. Um... So I'm glad that what they did with Sifu is they decided to release it earlier than original. Originally, Sifu was supposed to be released around the middle of February. But 
when they took a look at um is this theory the theory is gonna be all about February. i don't know his channel not being like, good shit. because of this, this comes out mid i can i don't know i don't know no one's gonna buy it yeah, he's he's such a dick rider for for public opinions, man. For like the general opinion. He got the attention that it deserves. He fucking slurps so that penny. We're talking about Sifu for a good week, it was very hype. Okay, it was very very exciting and hype, and I'm happy for that because I think the game really deserves it, and I'm happy that it got the recognition that it did. However, <laughs> what happened was Sifu came out the same time as Dying Light too. Now, Dying Light 2, a lot of people have been waiting for for quite some time. And people kind of approached it apprehensively, not knowing if it would be good or not. What's really weird about Dying Light 2 is that it sold a ridiculous amount of copies. But I really feel the reason that it did is because it was the first major considered AAA release of February. And let's be honest, January was completely dead. December was almost completely dead outside of Halo. So you're talking two plus months where there was Oh, I still haven't finished out. Dying Light 2. Dying Light it's alright, but it's way too easy. So way too easy. Inflated sales. Really, really because easy. Because when you look at the game and you play it, you realize... Inflated sales. Is there any reason why this game should be... Because it came out game? now? The graphics are good. Okay. You um, stupid son of a bitch. Once you play it, 15 hours... The graphics the are fucking good. The major city where the game gets good, where you actually have full-on parkour hovering on at like a glider, um, on on vents and stuff. The, the the missions open up and get better. The abilities get better. But it takes 15 hours to get there. It does not. Right. It literally doesn't. And I told you guys no. I was playing it. It was just actually yeah, terrible. He was just actually terrible at the fucking game. He was bad at the game. It took me less than 10 hours to go into the big city. And I did a bunch of side stuff to get powerful. A bunch of stuff. And it took me less than 10 hours. But this guy that reads tips and cheers and bits and shits and all that fucking garbage, of course it's gonna take him 15 hours. He's Mr. Meander. The fucking waste of time guy. Problems in modern game development is pacing. These game directors pacing. have no... And of course, I get it. Games are stretched out to be big nowadays because it justifies the price tag. When somebody tells you a Ubisoft game is 150 hours long and it costs $70, it's, it feels like a good ratio. But of course, you're fucking... A lot of the time, you're going to be doing kind of uh, checklist exactly the same stuff. What well, idea how to pace their game Anyways. Well. Pacing. And that the common person doesn't have 15 hours to waste to get to the real game. But also the common person wants to get a, a ban bang for their buck and not get a game that is like 20 hours long for $70. And it really depends. Because when we put the, the time you spend playing a game into the actual price point, it depends for different games. Because some games are good to be 20 hours long, some games are good to be 10 hours long, and some games are good to be 60. They have failed as a game director. And you failed as a game player. Good. The game review is like 7 out of 10, you know? Um, and you play the game and you're like, man, there's nothing great about the game, you know? There's just, The you know, parkour is great. You can't find better parkour nowadays so than this. Literally, timing. No. Was it hype? No. no. There actually wasn't tons of hype for the game. It was timing. It's Even fucking timing. But Why? Why would you spend more money before you want to buy the hype game that, that you will spend also full price for? That makes no, no sense. Before the really big games came out in February, right? So there you go. All right. Then Horizon Forbidden West came out. Now, Horizon Forbidden West, everyone's been waiting for for five years. The entire development cycle of this game, we've heard so much information about it. We heard so much more. By the way, I'm gonna try and balance between pausing and then catching up real quick without missing any information. So I'm gonna try this hybrid of commentary and live content. Version you play. So I mean, this game was destined for success. I don't know how Horizon could have failed with the amount of. So if you're watching this now or on demand and you have a preferred way of this, you can let me know. Just drop a comment or whatever. Crazy amount of. Because I'm trying to do some shit. And make some sense out of this while responding to him in some kind of a productive way. Because this is just a word salad of, of mentioning a bunch of games and saying when they came out. And graphics are some of the best of it. Look at again, again, immediately. First of all, the game is great. The graphics are beautiful. What a fucking clown. The I move in, the better weapons I unlock. Um, and the game does have a ridiculous amount of content to do in the world. Is it all fun? No. 
A lot of it's going to be tedious, boring shit, repetitive hunts, take over a base. Yo, the same generic open world shit you've done in every game ever. At the same time, there's a lot of unique things like cauldrons and stuff too, you see. I don't want to put him in so 125 because that's man, just like, uh, actually, it sets me off. I don't know. I it's I just, like it, better than a lot it, it of is really harder for me to okay. keep up with the okay. bullshit he's saying. Because it came out and everyone was, was talking about it. All of social media was 100% about Horizon for a week. And everyone was like, Okay, it's the light two what? Yeah, what talking about what? I've heard of it. Most people played Dying Light two for yeah. Those those two know. games they're not on the same level as hype. They're not. They're simply not. Dying Light two is a pretty low tier AAA game compared to uh, Horizon Forbidden West, which is a a first party PlayStation exclusive fucking game. Get real, Dark Side Phil. Come on, you should know this may, way hours? better than me. And and you know what? Nobody cares. So there you go. Um, Nobody cares about Dying Light, right? Dead. No one's talking about it. No oh, and now Elden Ring good. came out and Horizon is dead. Nobody February. cares, apparently. So for a week, that was all anyone talked about. Okay, for a week. He's all judging this based on Twitter, by the way. This is entirely based on Twitter. Not based on, I don't know, he watched a podcast, listened to somebody, talked to somebody in real life, member of some community on some forum, something, something, Reddit, something else. It's only Twitter. His entire uh, interaction with the world is just Twitter. And then what happened? When Elder Ring came out, that was the end all be all of everything. Are you hearing hype anymore for any other game? Nope. Are you hearing discourse about any of these other games? Nope. Um, do you really think people beat all these other games before Elden Ring came out? No. I mean, I, you would a actually have had to rush through Horizon for me. You don't Max. have to. You can like, also you play it later. And not taking your time. You can play it later, Phil. To actually beat it in a week. What? You would, you would have had to completely and utterly rush through Horizon to get to the end of it in time for Elden Ring's release. There's but actually no point. He's he's thinking that the normal customer is a let's player that plays through everything as quickly as they can. No, they just, you know, you can buy all the games that come out and play them at any pace that you want. That's the cool thing about gaming. You don't have to be like Phil and have a stupid shitty little schedule. You don't. I think what ended up happening was there's people who are really enjoying Horizon, and then all the mainstream reviews... Shout ah, out to your buddy Grug. Here we go with the big hype machine, right? The mainstream reviews for Elden Ring came out saying... Oh, now we're shitting on the 10, shills. 10 out of 10. The best game from software has ever pumped out. You absolutely must play it. Some idiots actually said it's a good entry point to the series. It's not. It's actually one of the oh. best entry points to the series because it really requires... A Some lot idiots. Of knowledge to understand Some idiots. They did it today, by the way. In great detail. They did it today. The idiots at the Escapist I magazine. Assume. They had a if podcast today released, that I watched. There was like uh, the end of discourse of anything else. All of social media, even people who normally would skip a game here like it is. Elden Ring and don't usually talk about games. Here like it is. Is Elden Ring a good place to start for newcomers? This is from the Escapist three hours ago. I watched this. Some idiots said it's a good thing. It's an actual podcast where multiple people are discussing the game. Multiple people are arguing the point. What is he reacting to? A lot to? of people bought the game, just like they did with Sekiro, thinking... What were they thinking? And now we get a clown fucking segment. One second. Shout out to your buddy Grug. Where are you going? For the knife? Again, we have a knife segment. Shut up! You're still on mission one. What did he tell her to shut up? Okay. Wait, what? Sorry about that. What? What happened? One second. Okay, it's a fake out. It's a fake out. It's a comedy bit. Yeah, he didn't actually tell his wife to shut up. No, he didn't tell his wife to shut up. It's gonna okay. say it to somebody else. It's not an, the actual thing. A lot of people bought Elden Ring thinking they could just jump into this franchise never having played anything before, and they're getting a rude awakening. They're all oh, getting to wow, what? early game bosses that for most of us who've been around... Wait, so so he must have said it to somebody since it was nothing, and I'm going to be an asshole and just pause everything and drop everything and try and figure out what happened. Who normally would skip a...
Okay. Thinking. Now we're listening. One Nothing second. happened. Nothing happened. Sorry about that. A lot of people bought Elden Ring thinking they could just jump into the Didn't bother to mute it. Played I don't before, fucking know, man. And they're getting a rude awakening. They're all getting to like early game bosses that for most of us who've been around the block and played these games before haven't really had issue with. You know, Murgit or God. Murgit. They're not actually very tough bosses at all if you've played FromSoft games before. But these people who've never done it are going yeah, to... Yeah, I can oh boost the audio God. later because that was going to get way too derailed. Early game boss check. Yeah, I can't do like, this right what now. What are you talking about? You know... It's actually not as far as I could have heard, there was nothing. In reality, you just gotta learn a few basic things about the game and understand the shortcomings of the game, like the insane input lag that we've talked about for the last few days. All right, damn, my soundproofing is better than I thought. It was loud as shit. They're out there with a leaf blower. So oh, it's, it's so okay. It's the is it the landscape? He yelled at the landscapers to shut up because he went out of the room. Why would he yell shut up if he didn't yell at someone? Yeah, it's landscapers. Um, so. That being said, hype all over the place for Elden Ring. Now, admittedly, there I did notice that there are still a few people, notable people, who are still playing Horizon and talking about it and posting up about it. But in general, the discourse has completely and utterly... Oh, I've seen those same people on Twitter. I follow the same threads. Come on. Man, just, just if you want to see a case in point of a one month that is exactly... The, the the poster case here for how advertising hype and release timing can affect your games and game sales and even impressions about your game, right? So we start off with Pokemon. That's the hot game everyone's talking about. And then immediately as soon as Sifu and Dying Light 2 came out, Pokemon's dead. No one's talking about it anymore, right? Everyone's talking about Sifu, but then everyone kind of beat Sifu quickly because it's not a long game. So now the discourse is shifting primarily to Dying Light 2 for a week. And then as soon as Horizon came out, no one ever mentioned Dying Light 2 ever again. It's all but it's like the game very well. May have dominated. May have actually sold more, right? February, two of them in March, two of them in April. These games very well. May have dominated. May have actually sold more. Right? Even though I know for a fact Horizon sold extra well and Elden Ring did sell really well too, these games might have actually done even better. Because when you have people who are focused on something rather than, oh, look here, wait, oh, 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 look here, wait, oh, oh, look here, wait, oh, look here, now down here, wait, look back here at the thing back here again, wait, what's this over here? Oh, oh, hey. Who does this? Focus. Who does this? It's hard for Who as a gamer does this? You know in advance the games that are coming out, what you're interested in, and what you want to buy on the spot or buy later. You don't have to buy a day one and do extensive YouTube coverage or some weirdo nonsense. Really you actually don't. understand or enjoy something at a, at a high level. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really liked February as a gaming month, but do I actually feel, outside of, I'd say, outside of Sifu, I don't feel like I got a complete experience out of anything that I played during the month because I just didn't have enough time to complete really experience. Enjoy it. Yeah, because you are the guy that talks for two hours and has a weird schedule. And gamers, the normal average people, and not the ones that you see on Twitter with the thousands of likes, they don't act like that. They don't really act like that. And they probably have a lot less time to play games because most of them have jobs. Any of the games because there was too many. You see, too and many games developers need to start understanding this because now it's getting bad. It used to be okay, maybe just during the busy gaming season, this would happen, dude. It was fucking February. I understand you want to sell your game, all right. I really don't get it. Sales numbers, are I really don't get it. And this is what you get when you get a guy to just talk and nobody to challenge him, nobody to confront him. Those idiots that were talking about Dark Souls, uh, Elden Ring being a good entry point, there were three of them on the show and they were all challenging each other and discussing stuff and making jokes and being entertaining. And they were asked answering stuff in chat for free. So, yeah, I don't know. Does that mean I don't know. you should like cannibalize each other? I mean, we're all in the same cannibalizing age. each <laughs> other. You really want to start eating each other up? It's kind of like the this same is a terrible movie. point. Okay. No, that's a movie releases. Sometimes what'll happen? You don't know shit about that. 
but for some odd reason, three to four big blockbuster movies release on the same day. Okay. It's like, how is anyone supposed to do that at the same time? It's, it's not going to happen. You're going to end up eating into each other. What? It's stupid. How? 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 You just go see two movies two separate days. How is he thinking about the world? What is this logic? Face out your stuff. Or at least have stuff that's unrelated. For example, if you're going to have a horror movie and a kid's animated movie come out the same day, that's probably okay. But two dramas, you know, Phil. two action movies, that's dumb. Oh, you an actual lunatic. It's kind of the same thing. Dude, oh now, my god. Is, is Somebody tell him now, to stop. Obviously you'd, you'd it's like every sentence has, has, has some nonsense in it that, still, is, that I need to pause the video and talk about. Yeah. These companies are going to have to start tackling. Case in point, let's take a look at the sad case of Guardians of the Galaxy. All right? So a year and a half ago, a game came out that was ultra-hyped, ultra-advertised, heavily pushed. With the Avengers? All the Avengers. All right? Ultra-hyped. That wasn't as, as hyped as he thinks he is because most gamers could see what it was. Which is a live action, a live uh, service, microtransaction filled clownery. From Crystal Dynamics. We were told for two, three years this game was going to be a monstrous. By the way, success. he himself was not sure whether to play Guardians or not because he thought it looked like shit. He said it himself this game looks like shit. I don't know if I'm going to play it. So he's a part of this of this thing that he says now people are, do are doing. He was the negative hype guy. It's going to be a games as a service game. You're going to play through a robust and interesting story-based campaign. And then you're going to be able to jump in with your friends all over the world and play through all this fun, interactive, cooperative gameplay. It's going to blow your socks off. It's going to be the Marvel game everyone's been waiting for. Yeah, it was robust. <laughs> robust campaign. A lot of people said, I don't know. I don't buy into this. Maybe the story will be decent, but... The whole games as a service thing doesn't make sense. First of all, who's asking for a games as a service Marvel game? No one. Like there was no audience saying, "Hey, you know what I who, Do you know who is asking for mobile games that drain your wallet? People like Phil because they ask for it with their wallet. But like a who is asking for it? The dudes that bought it and the dudes that bought the microtransactions and the dudes that Crystal Dynamics actually Square Enix saw that are buying stuff and were like, hey, I want them to buy stuff from me instead. I played for five years with my friends online. There was no demand for it, yet they wanted to create this game because they thought it was going to be a gravy train for them. And when I say they, I mean Square Enix. They're the publisher. They're the ones who told Crystal Dynamics to make this game and told them to make it a games as a service game rather than a strong narrative-based, story-based game, you see. So people were very skeptical when this game was coming out, what it was going to be. Now, it sold. You said it looked it like shit. I don't know about people. Well, but it did sell good initially. However, what they were counting on is that via word of mouth, this game was going to end up selling like hotcakes and become a ginormous bajillion seller that everyone would be playing for years and years. What ended up happening was the following. It came out in uh, September 2020, okay? A good amount of people bought it at launch, played through the story, said, all right, the story's all right. It's not great. Kind of weird that Ms. Marvel's the main character instead of Marvel characters we're familiar with, but whatever, they did something a little different, all right? And then they said, all right, let's get to the games, the service part. Oh my God, it fucking sucks. It's literally just grinding against generic enemies over and over and over. Yes, there were story-based games that released, or excuse me, story-based campaigns that released, but it was literally the same fucking thing endlessly. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. These games as a service models can work. We've seen games like uh, Tom Clancy's, uh, what was it called? The Division. Of? I can't even remember what it's called anymore. Tom doesn't Clancy even know what he's going to talk about. Is, but Borderlands. Yeah, it's kind of the same <laughs> third person, right? <laughs> um, and other games like that, you know, Destiny, etc. They've all succeeded. But Avengers came late to the game. And again, what they should have done was research and saying, what is it that people actually want? from a Marvel game. And the answer would not have been a games as a service. We've seen games as a service. We have games as a service that's successful. We don't need another one that's Marvel based, you see? But they didn't. They just thought erroneously, we could just pump one out and people will play it. And that's not the case. Erroneously. It's Ghost Recon that I was talking about, Tom Clancy, right? Ghost so, Recon? No. A failure. 
Uh, I mean, yeah, Breakpoint was terrible and it had those mechanics and it was kind of a looter shooter, but it's the division that he wanted to talk about, actually. Because that's well, way more like uh, Guardians. Marvel's event. Way more. It sold poorly compared to what Square Enix had anticipated or wanted, especially for the amount of money and development time and hype and advertising budget they'd put into it. Square Enix became terrified that other projects they had in the pipeline were not going to be successful, and therefore they essentially pulled the plug on their plans to heavily promote Marvel games. They actually had originally had a marketing plan where it was going to be like once a year, there was going to be a major Marvel game, starting with Avengers, then Guardians, and then moving on. But when Guardians flopped for them, they essentially said, oh shit, we got to change our focus because if we follow through with this plan, we could lose a ton of money because the, the, the gamer base isn't there for these Marvel games. So, the game that suffers ends up being Guardians of the Galaxy. This is a game, all right, that had one of the worst advertisement campaigns I've ever seen. We didn't even know the game was being made until like two to three months beforehand when they randomly did this digital presentation showing a bunch of Square Enix games that would be coming out. And during this event, what they did is they showed some raw gameplay. Now, I don't know what they were showing because what they showed literally didn't look as good as what I played on PS5. It looked like it was a downgraded version. Maybe it was a last gen version of the game. But it looked kind of all right bad. it looked bad let's skip to the in reality they literally just let the piece of dog shit we lied to you about that saying it was good but this one really is instead they just literally said nothing about it at all he said nothing like, this game is legitimately good a ginormous word of mouth campaign among gamers word of mouth campaign no it was it was just it came out and it was like hey this game is good go play it and people played it and it was good and you can still buy it and you can still enjoy it. Check the game out. It's good. So within about a week of me not oh. playing the game, people were like, Phil, you got to play it. It's actually insanely good. And he I considers that nobody does their own research because he doesn't. Nobody does their own research. Nobody looks at a, a preview or a gameplay or anything and decides where, whether to buy the game or not. And also they can buy it after it comes out. Why does he assume that people are going to buy it day one? Oh. If it comes out, people say it's ass, then don't buy it. I played it. I was like, oh my God, it's good. Like, it's ridiculously good. So I loved playing it. Yeah, they, they did lose a ton yeah, of money with the Avengers game. Now, the new story just came out this last week. Square Enix publicly now. Oh, oh, Guardians was a huge sales flop for us. Ugh. I was expecting more from the game. It's like, wait a minute. Wait a fucking minute. You assholes did not advertise it. You refused to advertise the game. That's retarded. You didn't say it was good. All you did was showed us a little snippet of it that looked shitty like two months before it released, and that was it. Shout you out to your buddy, the game Rug. The fucking Wolves and left it to try to, to, to do itself, you know? And I don't understand how they thought it was going to fucking... And he's snap. looking at Chad this whole time for reactions. Like, Nobody is acknowledging him at all. Like, no sh this clown mode was for nothing, actually. Uh, even though I'm not in reality in his chat. Like, actually, it's not live. Never mind. But it was Chad, bad. It's like kind of like, no shit, Sherlock. Yeah, anyone with fucking common sense would have told you the game didn't sell that well when you didn't fucking say it was good, you idiots. So, it didn't sell well. What a shock. Now, I do believe it did sell decently over a few months, but if you remember, there was a series of sales, like a month later, where the, the price of the game was like half, and then it was like a third. So I'm sure more people bought it then. And in general... The game was very well received. It won a third, awards, a third off, and it was actually in tons of people's best games of the year's lists and countdowns. You know, but apparently it just didn't sell up to the expectation. How do you have an expectation, but you don't put that game in a position to succeed? This would be like you got a sales job. You go to work, and you're expecting oh no, to sell terrible analogies a certain yet again. Amount of computers, a certain amount of computer components, helicopter work, parts, and there's nothing there. Oh, or everything's out of stock, but you better make your sales numbers. What the fuck are you talking about? There's nothing here to sell. How am I supposed to make my sales numbers? You can make the best game ever, but if no one knows that it's good or it exists, how the fuck will you sell it, right? It doesn't make any sense. Actually, a better, actually, a better baller alert. Calling out baller alert. Got no when I worked for Best Buy, Baller alert. Calling out baller alert. Got 
big ups and he says uh he says marvel's avengers lost around a hundred million guardians was already well into development why throw money into something which looks like it's gonna lose more money for them i agree with you but uh dsp has a business degree and i bet square enix people they didn't have any started a business team called best buy for business but now he's gonna give you a, a class and all of a sudden best buy decided they were gonna now carry all these products that normally you wouldn't think you could buy at a best buy store like a server server software networking equipment to link your <laughs> what do you know about it your own business but literally best Buy server equipment software to tell anyone that this team existed or that this this product existed <laughs> so literally we stood in the store like assholes dressed up in dress shirts and ties looking nicer than anyone else in the store and we just stood there like this doing nothing all day and we sold normal computers to normal people coming in because no business owners knew we sold business equipment Right, we had the good stuff. No, this is this is it. bad because it's there's way too much detail to it. That's it's not a good analogy. One of the best no, of the year. no, no, no. They still promoted it. Come on, it was there was still something. It was good because they didn't advertise it. It was just known as like a lesser known game that less people should or would probably care about. They were so afraid to put. They money were afraid. In the game. This this these marketing campaigns cost millions of dollars tens of millions movies usually have have their budgets go to marketing to make it like a big hype thing because Avengers, this guy doesn't know shit they were didn't want to waste more money uh, right but that's a bad a way a bad it's a thing. bad thing well yeah and in, in retrospect it's a bad fucking take this game is in retrospect different from avengers right it is 100 different from avengers it's not a games as a service game it has a lengthy robust story mode with insanely good writing Great graphics. The characters. He incredible. cried. Uh, he cried to this game twice. Marvel movie. It was so robust. And they fucked it up. <laughs> so anyway, I guess the only good. This is like saying DSP. Anybody could see that it's not a good idea to move cross country and spend all your money. And then he's gonna say, "Yeah, but I didn't know that. I thought everything would be okay back in 2017." Well, back in 2014, I thought everything would be amazing. Good That's like saying know. that to DSP and it's gonna make you look like an asshole. The Bacal, Guardians well, I didn't Galaxy fucking know any of that. Free for PS Plus this month. It's actually one of the games being added for free for PS Plus. Hey, that's Plus. cool. PS Plus. From the middle of the month. That's cool as fuck. That's a strong month. So if you're part of PS Plus and you didn't play it yet, you gotta They're gonna push that Spartacus thing. insanely good. Like, it's way better than it has any right to be. And... Square Enix just fucked it up at every possible level because they're a bunch of fucking idiotic morons when it comes to management. How did they fuck? Just what? Game, game development? They're but isn't this a win for gamers? Because now uh, a lot of people are going to get it for free. I mean included in their subscription. So this is good for us. Why are you mad? Teams are great. But Why are you mad? Management is terrible. And now a bunch of people are going to play this game and then say to themselves that it's good and that they might make a sequel. I would hate to work for that company. If it's not already in, devel in development. And not know if your game is going to be prominent or completely mismanaged and shuffled under the rug because the managers are morons. You know? It's like they don't even understand their, their, their customer base. Okay, now I can actually open it. Uh, did he legitimately yell at landscapers out the window? Did he Literally. seriously do that? People that are just doing their job in a day that he should know that they're doing their job. And this man baby in his fucking office, look how it looks. Looks like shit. It's fucking terrible. And he yells at them through the window. Let's go in the future. When it needed that advertisement to succeed, and it got none. So, it's just like in the modern day, you cannot... And he did a clown mode, but I'm gonna just have to catch up. Okay, let's... Game. This is nonsense. But more people will, will play it. This is just the same point. Companies to be pumping out good games anymore. Why would you you know what you're doing the game is incredibly rewarding and super duper fun okay oh yeah oh. he maybe maybe he closed the window and then he yelled that's a, a thousand percent a dsp thing i i agree with you on something that's the end all be all completely misspoken i feel like a moron what did he say i don't know why i got the two mixed up in my head entire video yo what what this was my song what happened? Entire stream and start over. What is happening? All right, guys, hold on. Sorry. What is he doing? 
This is literally my song. Pay my taxes, pay my back taxes. Yeah. This is a, it's a slow day. It's a slow day. That's my song. What the fuck happened? Of course I'm kidding. We're not going to do that. <laughs> what? I'm not going to do that. But what I, I completely misspoke. I don't know why I got the two mixed up in my head. It is not coming out free for PS Plus this month. I'm wrong. In fact, the games that are free for PS Plus this month are not very good. I actually saw them. I was like... Oh, oh so he's, he was wrong about this. He got me excited for no reason. Xbox Game Pass. Boy, I can feel. I completely misspoke, and now I feel like a moron. Hold on. Yeah. It's, it's been a rough year. Why does Phil always have to mention that there's a tip skull on the stream? Why does he have to mention... Well, shout out to the guy that made him. Why does he have to bring that? Shout out. Baller alert. Calling out baller alert. Got no problems with baller alert. Did everybody on me? I jump on stream. Obviously, I need tips. Pay my taxes. Pay my back taxes. Pay my utilities. Pay my mortgage. Pay my internet bill. Pay my utilities. Very slow. Yeah, this was my fucking song. I don't know why it was on his outro. Aru. <laughs> but I thank those of you who corrected me in the stream chat and completely embarrassed me. Okay, he got embarrassed. Big oh, deal. The month that it becomes free on so you're fucking wrong, you <laughs> son of a bitch. And you actually gave me misinformation. I was so, excited. The point here I'm making is... In the oh my god, we know the point. Which ones are the best? Sometimes I guess right. Sometimes you guys give me the feedback I need to play the good ones. But man, it's disappointing if you miss out on a good one, but you played a shitty one instead. Or vice versa, you play a good one... And you miss a shitty one, you're like, wow, I dodged a bullet. Like, man, I <laughs> you dodged illegally a stole my content. Last year, skipping both Battlefield uh, 2042 and Call of Duty Vanguard. I, I probably theoretically could DMCA him, but I, I would never do that. I didn't play either, So, yeah. Because there's nothing but bad news about those games. Oh, uh, and he could take me down. Seriously. That's that's where we are right now. We're in a, it's a standoff. It's like those, uh, those movies. So, we're all pointing guns at each other. It's, it's an interesting... Uh, but they're all fake guns because real guns are not allowed on YouTube. March, okay. It's, it's just like March. airsoft weapons. What's the lineup? Let's go live. Let's go live. A lot of these games be overshadowed because people are still playing... We are live now. ...the high-profile games from February that there's no way you could beat because they're such, so, such lengthy games, you know? It's interesting. I don't know. I think we might... See, we definitely might see some cannibalization here. I think cannibalization. Not Stranger Paradise game. It's like DSP eating bacon. Games like that. that are kind of, uh, you know, interesting combat and stuff like that. And, you know, the boss fights are kind of like Dark Souls. We already got Elden Ring, you know. I don't know. The other thing is, one thing that I found hilarious, okay. So, for the entire, like, month and a half leading up to February, for some odd reason... All games journalists and games media were hyping up this this Destiny 2 expansion, whatever it was called. Oh, yeah. Now he's going to be a hater for fucking Destiny. No. A game he doesn't play. Way, Let's hate on the, a game that Phil has no interest in playing. Way, but loose. Whatever it was called. Okay. I don't even know what the hell it was. And now the funny thing is that he's but ignorant. They were all claiming like it was one of the biggest releases coming out in February. Everyone, Destiny It is for people that like it. Your fucking pants right off. It's so hype. And I even called it out and I said, I wonder why they're doing that because let's be honest. Yes, Destiny 2 has a big player base. It's a very popular MMO slash co-op shooter, whatever you want. Maybe to because uh, Sony Destiny bought Space, them. I guess. They bought Bungie, right? An amalgamation of so it's supposed to be kind of more hype now. Right. Um. But do you really think that this expansion will bring anyone new to the game? Maybe a yes. thousand people here or there. But do you really think, that, oh, God, because there's an expansion out for an already existing game with an already existing player base. This guy's an actual yeah. lunatic. Oh, like, you, really you, you can't physically think stuff. that this That's is, like, actual gaming really takes from a professional. Game. Who's going to care about this when I don't care about this? What, you want him to spend hundreds of millions developing another Destiny? More money. Of course, that would be the cooler thing, but right? what? And here's what happened. I'm not exaggerating. It came oh. out, and... Very briefly, you saw a few people talking about it online, and immediately online. The narrative shifted to the mainstream games like Horizon, Elden Ring. No one is talking about Destiny Two except for the people in the Destiny Two bubble, and it's a very isolated. I mean, people that enjoy it. It's not really branching out or reaching into other areas. It's just if you're into it, you talk about it. 
outside of that, literally it didn't exist. It came out and no one cares. It didn't okay? exist. It's and a free game that you can go in. What me about that is, again, I, I, I don't get it. Overhyped the fuck out of it, claiming it was going to be one I don't of get it, for real. February, when it really was just like a fart in the wind. Unless you're in that bubble. This, again, this is kind of like... But it's, it's a DLC, bubble, yeah. It's a DLC. Unless you're not a fan of the game, you probably wouldn't be all that interested. Of course, Street Fighter community... Because it's a DLC. The same way. I thought that... I'm Fighting talking about Street fucking Fighter Street Fighter now. The most important thing. I was in that media hype bubble. I was. It's like, man, can't why can't you just be positive about something? Why do you have to be negative? Talk about the good things that are happening. It's in that that that. Big Talk about something nice. One community. Do you want to attract angry people to you? About it all the time, right? But then when I kind of brought in uh, prices and I kind of stepped outside of the realm of. We shouldn't have DLC anymore. Said, what else is out there? My eyes were widened. I was blown away. I started playing games like Mass Effect, Bioshock, Blue Dragon, GTA 4, just to name a few. Whoa. When I played these games, I was like, oh You became my a God, real gamer. Gaming is crazy good now. You know, compared <laughs> to back when I was playing it before I was into competitive Street Fighter, now that I've stepped out of this bubble of ignoring everything around me and actually experiencing this shit, you know. Holy crap. DSP. This is tiny. It's a bubble that's probably... Fairly large, but not. it's not like League of Legends size. You know what I'm saying? It's not competitive first-person shooter esports size. It's not those kind of bubbles that are like planets. But it's still a pretty big bubble. But God, why does gaming journalism think that that kind of shit... Oh, it's a game journal rant. Outside of the bubble. Well, welcome. Oh, it's one of the hypest releases. It's, it's what this is about. This is what the actual point of this is about. Hating, hating on game journalists. That's all that this was about. No, really, it's not. You don't know what you're talking about. Maybe you play it and you're hyped because of it. Still, you don't know what you're talking about. Bubble, no one talks about it. There's no one. But why would they care about other people talking about it? When they can talk about it with people that care about the game and are interested in, and are having fun together. Why would they go out and talk to fucking DSP that's a not negative fucking asshole about everything? Outside. Why would they want to do this? Of that core fan base of Destiny 2, we're talking about Destiny 2. It's, it's a dead game for everyone else. And it's you know? a dead game. But it's good that they have that. For everyone else. They left Activision, right? What does that they even fucking right mean? Game. Apparently, I've heard they retooled the game. They made it much better than. Yeah, it was. he hasn't Activision played it since it came out originally. Uh, things that Activision forced them to do. But it's a dead game. To the point where they completely. I want to see actually uh, and their the numbers. Is a good community. That's good. I'm happy they did that and they found that success. Because under Activision, man, when you're with a big publisher and they make you do shitty things, ugh, you hear these horror stories. You're trying to nickel and dime everyone and fucking, oh, you got to do all these decisions we didn't want to do. And we feel like it's ruining our game. Well, this is a pretty hot game, if you ask me. It got... Playing 21 minutes ago, this was 114,000. Because... Which is I fucking used to nice. Be in these bubbles. No, really. Like, I used to be so hyper focused on my one thing because at the height at look at this how is it how is it a dead game look at the chart for the last year it's been pretty fucking stable it doesn't go up and now it went up uh significantly it doesn't go down all that much it's a pretty you know it's a game that people play but the bubble is very small i guess that was like and this is just on pc ju this is just on steam i forgot to mention this is just on steam and looked around myself and it's free on everything on like playstation Actually, whatever that's it solid on when you step back and look not ginormous new sales for the game uh, droves and droves there was not a million new players who jumped on destiny 2 because of an expansion it was the same people playing it you see but there was a million new people who played all the new games you see the point i'm making your point is trash you're comparing a dlc to new games that are coming out are you actually Wild. All right. Anyway, that's just what I wanted to talk about today. All right. Let's do some shout outs. Um, on the YouTube side of things, we have. This is pretty, pretty good numbers. Rank two of 134 MMOs on this site, MMO populations dot whatever. Uh, and. It has 39 million total players and daily players 
million estimated which i don't know where they get this from but apparently is a thing it's a game that is a thing and then as we see the five-year breakdown it used to start what is this this is not five fucking years what is this all right this probably costs some money or something no uh this is i don't know this from the it's not the last five years it's not it's just months i don't know what they're talking about anyways in a way uh, but it's a dead game i guess it's supposed to be you can just listen to the podcast it's dead man nobody cares outside the people that care doing you could just follow one playthrough and you know because i'm a variety streamer every other day you're going to get hours of new new stuff to watch right which is neat you could be someone who's a much larger scale fan who likes to follow everything i do and then you've got non-stop content pumping out for you right pumping but out content is, every day <laughs> What I love like is a machine I, I and here you go. I'm on a stream today. I got an audience and there's some regulars and there's some sporadic viewers and there's some newcomers, right? It's a good mix, but and there's trolls Horizon may be different from the people here tonight for Skyrim, which may be completely different from a larger group that'll be here tomorrow for Elden Ring, which is completely different from maybe a smaller group that'll be here for Pokemon. And then we got then somebody called him in chat saying, Phil, did you do any research before making those Destiny 2 statements? Is it just your assumption you're, use, you're presenting now as facts? Google it, dude. I literally just did. You're totally wrong. Once in a while. There's people who just listen to the podcast. There's people yeah, who it's even his fucking chat. Only certain gameplay. I love this. That's and, cool. and then some his DSP's member says you must be new here. Not Inmate Elvis, who I guess is a member. He says, you are you must be new here. He doesn't do research on jack shit. Highest and most prominent. If I decided I'm just going to be a, a fighting games guy, I would not be here. I wouldn't. I would have failed miserably because I would have gotten, number one, I know I would have gotten burnout. Okay? And number two, because you just can't do that and expect that it's going to be at its height of prominence at all times. Street Fighter 4 was... That guy that didn't get banned. And then it went, boom. And then she's gonna get the lean in manual though. And then it went a nice lean and then it manual. got back up a slow climb, right? But this is what happens. Things you know have highs and lows over the years. But because I'm a variety content creator, I do a variety of things. I play games, I talk with you guys, we have podcast content, there's all kinds of variety of stuff. I can retain an audience of, of trolls, many different people, trolls all over the world, different walks of trolls. life, trolls, trolls and dense. <laughs> Trolls in wheelchairs. My content and still support or as he would say it. Cool Scumbags it and mental cases on the internet. You never know. Still I never know what's going to happen on, on a given stream. You know? Yeah, he might jerk off. Idiots out there who like to, to shit on me and think that. <laughs> no way that shout I out. We have real fans. The Those shout out. Understand that shout out to your buddy stream, Rug. On any given video. Someone comes in and says, Phil, you know, I've been watching a few of your playthroughs casually. I'd like to support you. Here's a tip. Or here's a super chat. Or here's a membership. Okay. You got someone who's a super fan and says, I just want to drop a big contribution today because... Yeah, that's literally your job. So Are you trying to flex? Years. You're and bad at your job, actually. More consistent and come back and regularly contribute. But it's the success because you can watch the content however you want and you can enjoy it. You can be sitting at your desk and gelling and just have it playing in the background. Or you could actively be watching me play every piece of Elden Ring and be excited to see if I'll overcome a boss or get pounded into dust by a boss. And it's all completely valid, right? And because of that, I have a variety of supporters who do things like like different kinds of support all the time and from all around the world and all and behind the scenes. You know I mean? That's awesome. I sadly <laughs> hate to say it. There's people who just don't have that, and I actually kind of feel bad for those people who sadly didn't see the writing on the wall. Oh, they tried to these waves of the popular holy theory. fuck. And then when the hype and popularity died out for a certain genre of game or a certain shtick on YouTube, they just kind of fizzled out and disappeared or... You get 500 views a video, you stupid son of a bitch. Completely had to change who they were. You are begging for a living. You are not successful. You're begging for $10 and $20. You're still on mission one. What is this discussion? Why would you talk about this, about other people who didn't make it? But they're not here asking for tips every day. And they're not here pointing at memberships and guilt tripping people and asking people for their fucking buy-in. They're not doing this. And this is called self-respect. 
Because when you try to be a shill and make the shitty KO gaming videos and nobody fucking cared and they realized you're a stupid dumb son of a bitch that was just making terrible fucking videos, you're still persistent on wanting to do this as a job and still trying the most pathetic fucking schemes to get as money as much money as possible from actual idiots. Sure. And in a lot of cases, these people sold out. So tell me how you were successful. And ended up completely changing the content they put out. Okay. They became trash pushers. You okay. Know what I mean? Are are they asking for tips? Fluff garbage makers, okay. toxic video maker, drama okay. video makers. That this is he's talking about Keemstar and he's talking about Review Tech USA. Which is, both of them are doing way better than he is. This is garbage, man. Grade A trash, and they pump it out on a daily basis because it's all they can get views on. You literally said two minutes ago you were pumping out content every day. You use this that same term, you're pumping out shit. And you upload way more garbage than they do. You have six videos a day, and now he's going to publish a daily community post with his schedule. Do you really think that's what they want to do? They probably want to make meaningful content like everyone else, and they can't because they've lost their way, and they can't really get back to any kind of prominence unless they just make shit. For dumb people and i'm happy that that never happened to me that shit I for dumb people enjoy what i do be myself and interact with you guys and have good times with games and have people from all over the world tune in for various different reasons and enjoy it in different ways as well you're a living meme you're a living meme okay um you are there you go plum girls has agreed your content's with me through moving traveling working laying in bed sick all kinds of stuff there you go i don't know anything about those guys CB666 says, what about XQC and Asmongold? I don't oh, know yeah, yeah, he hates them. He hates them. He hates them because uh, XQC does reaction videos and he hates them. He doesn't know about them, but if he did, he would hate them. And Asmongold is bigger than him, so he hates them instantly. And he shouldn't exist, so Phil can exist more. I've heard that they're very prominent content creators. I have no idea what kind of content they put out, so I'm not Yeah, you them. hate them. Uh, they make fun reason, stuff. Wouldn't it? I've never they make it. things that are fun. Uh, Starved for Games took me $2. And people bother, you know, third-party people bother to make highlights for them and positive videos talking about them because they're fun. And guess who does not do that? Anybody who likes DSP. There is no DSP highlights fan stuff that is made. Since, I guess, when he decided to make his own This Is How You Don't Plays, and he got his fans to make them, and they were absolutely terrible. So thank you for that. Let's see what he had to say, or they had to say. How dare I say he and gender this person without knowing? And <sighs> made a huge faux pas. Okay, so Star for Games to me two dollars says I was trying to pre-order Ghostwire Tokyo on Xbox Live Store, but I'm having trouble. And he'll suggestions. Which console do you plan to play Ghostwire Tokyo on? Of course, he's being facetious. Excuse me. They're being facetious because it's only on PlayStation 5 and I think PC is not on Xbox console. So there you go. Jade says, I love Horizon. I don't care what people are saying. And Marvel Gardens of the Galaxy was my favorite of your live streams. Awesome, Jane. Good to have you here today. And a big thumb up. All right. So ladies and gentlemen. All right. This should be it. Let's wrap it up with this terrible shit. Let's go watch some... And it's it's the outro that has, again, my song on it. This is also my song. You know this at this point. And I guess the intro also had it, uh, which is the thing that he played by accident. So I guess that's where it came from, which I'm kind of curious about. Yeah, that's, that's where it's from. It's a long-ass fucking intro. All right, are we going to get to see it? So this is it for the podcast. Like I said, I'm not going to play, I'm not going to watch him play games because that's like, I don't know why I would do that. Yeah, this is my song here. Fucking nice. Does that mean I own DSP? Because I can take down his video based on two things that I made that he used unauthorized. Now we go back on KO Gaming to see how Phil was when he was making meaningful, thoughtful, interesting, engaging, uh, edited, highly great production value videos. And I'm going to watch some random review of his. Uh, Fallout 4, this one is great. He called it a mixed bag, gave it a 9.5 or a 9.75 out of 10. That was a fucking sweet video. 
and this was supposed to be rebooting his hateful truth game reviews series uh episode one and i don't know if he did any after this i think he did but they were called other things it was still the hateful truth but it was called other things to clickbait because that wouldn't get a lot of views because nobody knows what the hateful truth is uh, the most the most disappointing games of 2016 countdown part one and this as a countdown video needs to be really interesting and really fun right i Ladies hope it and is gentlemen 2016 has finally come and we get an audio attack a year that for many people they seem to draw a consensus was one of the worst in recent memory it doesn't seem to have been any different for the realm of video games typically I do a top 10 list of the most disappointing games of the year, but I found myself so hard pressed to narrow down the amount of upsetting, disappointing, shitty video games from this past year, I'm actually doing a top 20 countdown. That's right, the top 20 most disappointing games of this past year. Now you might say, well, what constitutes a disappointing game? 20 countdown. That's right, the top 20 most disappointing games of this past year. Now you might say, well, what constitutes a disappointing game? I just want to be up front and say here, just because a game was I muted this whole time doesn't necessarily mean Yeah, I was gonna say this looked okay. Game. The games in this countdown are going to include games that yes, absolutely were shitty overpriced, underwhelming, and disappointing in one way or another, but that doesn't mean that they were terrible. In a lot of ways, some of the games that were released in 2016 were so hyped or had such a long development cycle or had so much anticipation built up over the years for them that when they finally released, it was just so underwhelming and not living up to that amazing amount of expectation that we all felt kind of down. Yeah, it was muted, but I'm back. We got our hands on them. But I'm back to the back. The side of that is that there were a ton of games that were shameless cash ins, rip offs, crappy performance at launch. Rip offs. Overall, did not deserve our hard earned dollars. So, this, I guess, part one is going to be trash because it's just the, the low level games, the, the ones that don't matter. Oh, it's WWE. And of course, he made a guy look like him. And this this is how he looks. And he has a. <laughs> his wrestling outfit is a black t shirt that says shit on it. It's literally just a black t-shirt with shit written on it. Here, the micro What a great wrestler. Much better than previous years. He should be a jobber. If DSP was a wrestler, he would be a jobber. He'd lose everything. It would be like Santino Morella. So we all bought into it. We bought the game. And sadly, we all... It would be the scat man. That's who he would be. It would be a guy that looks like this. And he would just... He would be the boogeyman. But instead of eating worms, he would eat like fake, fake crap found out the hard way that all these promises pretty much were not lived up to. First of all, the new promo mode is incredibly silly. All you do is you pick... Yeah, it's lame. Quick that shit was lame because it's like really weird and half-baked. Because you can't have a promo where you don't hear anybody you're saying uh, what, what they're saying. These promos feel more like something that splits up the actual events that you want to get to, the matches, and holds so up the Klaus Mystery for Super Chat, rather than anything who else. says, uh, I watched that Dragon Ball Z playthrough with Dante. It sucked. Phase. Now, the rest of the career mode... Well, it was a disappointing game, dude. Pans out to be That's why it sucked. The game was bad. Sure. Meaningless one-off matches week after week after week after week. Only upon release, we all found out that it could take upwards of 10 to 15 hours of repetitive grinding gameplay before you even get a title shot at any oh yeah this the interesting and you they haven't done a career mode that, that was worth mode. anything for a long time the top of the wrong the upper echelon win a tournament get that title defend it against opposition and maybe even move up to the next level of championship it takes so long in wwe 2k17 that you just give up at some point Okay, next game. We're trying to improve upon the formula. What is this? Is this Pokemon? So much, no. Some fighting game? Actually thing? A sequel. 
the plot line is identical to that of the first game. A lot of the characters, oh, it's uh, even Dragon Ball, yeah. The villains are the same, and yeah, even some of the actual combat scenarios are just ones from the established Dragon Ball Z franchise. So therefore, you're redoing a lot of the identical fights from the original game. Now, not to say that there aren't noted improvements, including a very increased. Oh, rate there's rate. something else that I want to show. Hope City that seems a lot more interesting because now you can. Move yeah, this is uh, the Xenoverse game. Around. You're right. Running on foot. Oh, so much shilling. The wow, his description is almost entirely shilling. There's just loot crate, then we get kingofhate.com, Patreon, YouTube, Twitch, YouTube again, second channel. Kingofhate.com again, slash stream. And then we have King of Hate vlogs in Twitter. Wow, you can't follow this guy in enough places. But what I wanted to show you is, if you are wondering what the hateful truth is, minus the editing, and actually what like what a DSP review is like, it's this. Of course, with a machinima intro, because he was fancy back in the day. In a abysmal intro. This intro, this intro is just a crime, especially with this logo. And this is it. Terrible audio straight off the gate. Oh, uh, uh. hello there. Uh, DSP here. I didn't hear you come in. And, uh, welcome yeah, to were you jerking off? The Hateful Truth video game review series where I give you a maximum truth and minimum bullshit regarding the latest video game releases. And uh... <laughs> he's trying to do like a nostalgia critic uh, sketch or something. something. I don't know. He's trying to be like the nostalgia critic, but for games. The new console generation was released, right? And we heard that the PS4 and the Xbox Which One is were going to bring AVGN, I guess. new visuals, amazing graphics, cool new technological advancements that were going to allow game development. Ooh, this audio is so ass. Of gaming to your living room. I was just as hyped as everyone else. And you know what? I can actually fix this. He didn't fix it, but I will fix it. Because I can actually do that. Okay. Try this. This should be much better. Well, I always take it with a grain of salt, meaning, okay, that's great. Is this better? New consoles are coming out, but what realistically are you bringing to us? And in the past year and a half that both the PS4 and Xbox One have come out, it's been it's been just few and far between. Yeah, it's much better, right? That have been released. Because OBS has a noise gate. Exclusive. And this guy doesn't have a noise gate, so you get to hear everything. All the electronics that are on. Where you can say, wow, that was definitely a, a, an amazing example of what's going to be done in this new console generation. In fact, more often than not... But this, yeah, this is what I wanted to show you, what the actual... Uh, if, if the gameplay wasn't on this video, what you would be looking at is just him just sitting on the couch and rocking and, and rambling. Because this review is 30 minutes long. You end up getting something that's amazingly overhyped. It's like the next... And it's not even like an angry Joe review that is long for a purpose, because there's barely any editing in it. There's some clips. Let's see how good the clips are. Logging channel isn't protected under the guise of being a uh, managed partner channel like my gameplay channel, TSP Gaming, is with Machinima. And I'm afraid that if I put in audio visuals that they may start giving me copyright flags and shit. So I'm just going to put little clips here and there, okay? You were in 1986. Yes, the premise of the game is that... You Wait, you st he, he started talking about the game at seven minutes in. Machinima, and I'm afraid that if I put in audio visuals that they may start giving me a squad of knights who basically were founded by King Arthur back in the day, which is an interesting plot twist. And, and this is it. This evolved into KO Gaming basically a year later because he started this channel in like 2016. So yeah, a year later, this evolved or evolved, if you would like. Now let's see his disappointing games part two, and then there's a part three. Is there more? No, that's it. It's just three. And this one even has chapters, which bewilders me because he never used to do that shit. I don't even know how how it works. Probably automatic somehow. Very interesting. Most disappointing games of 2016 countdown. If you haven't seen the other parts yet, be sure to check the video to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Mutants in Manhattan. And with this, he was sounding like, I don't know, his voice is so bad and, and like, grumbly. Boy, have the Ninja Turtles <sighs> when it comes Sounds to like his mom. the same amount of shitty cash and uh, like boy that they've been used in to rob gamers of their hard-earned dollars. They rob gamers. <laughs> Nobody move. Put the money in the bag. Villains 
and a lot of Buy this game. plot lines and things. Oh yeah, the text is floating on screen. That is fantastic. That are gonna please longtime fans of the Ninja Turtles series. Fams? It's just too bad that all of that was combined with some of the most boring, repetitive, button mashing, grindy gameplay you've ever seen. The fact that once there were more than a few enemies on the screen, it was absolutely impossible to keep track of combat because enemies would lunge from behind the camera or off screen. He's not even moving the camera in this. Oh, now he moved it. Flowing combat of the game ended up failing because of it. And also the fact that this game- But look at this gameplay is terrible. And he chose this as a highlight of why the game is bad. Because he, this entire time, his camera was in a bad spot. Basically, then he decided to move it here for a second. And, the and then he put himself in a shitty position game. again where he ended couldn't see anything. Because of it, and, also, and now here he can't see anything because he's backed up against the wall and the camera is pushing into the wall, which is a thing that he does all the time. The fact that this game only took about four to five hours. Look at this. He's not even looking at the enemy. But was being sold for 50 US this dollars his highlights. at launch. In an edited video. Like it was a full retail release when in reality, it was more of a small digestible digital content release. It was completely unacceptable. What a letdown for those of us who've been longtime fans of the franchise and we're hoping that Platinum Games could finally turn around the insanely long streak of video game stinkers that the Ninja Turtles have been involved in. Mutants in Manhattan sadly did not do Yeah, that. and he was out of breath Number as well. Nine, umbrella <laughs> in, a, in a video that you can just pause and get your shit together and then talk, he was out of breath. He was all over the place. Because this is not a... It's not that kind of a video. He wanted it to be, but it's not. And also you have massive red text on the screen. Instead of what everybody does, which is you have like a transition screen that says number five, Umbrella Corp. And then you have another transition and then, then there's the game. Four. But no, instead you can just put the... Terrible. Originally titled Resident Evil Umbrella Corp, but removing Terrible. the Resident Evil from the title to avoid fan backlash. This game is just another case of Capcom creating a shameless spinoff for a cash-in on a franchise that has nothing to do with the core gameplay of the game. I'll be honest here, for the first couple of hours that I played Umbrella Core, even though I knew the game was terrible, having really bad animations, a variating frame rate that made it unplayable. In yeah, I mean, this game, it's just uh, kind of silly game mechanics. It just looks it terrible, kind of I don't know why. It's like the Metal Gear Survive game. There was a asset flip of Metal, Metal Gear... Ah, MGS5. Playing on maps such as the Arctic base from Shout Resident out to Evil your Zero Rogue. or the African village from Resident Evil 5 actually felt kind of cool to have this kind of competitive third-person shooter with monsters and zombie elements impl uh, kind of put into the gameplay that you've never seen in any kind of a game like this before. But immediately after one day, the entire game broke down when people found the insanely abusable things in the game, including an insta-kill melee attack. Oh yeah, the insta-kill melee attacks. That was great. And teleported people. That was great. Any kind of danger. I remember just this. Instantly stab the opponent in the head. I mean, this game wasn't no big by any means. Game diluted. Uh, but yeah, this was a meme. Shooter with monsters to a game where you run around with a little axe hook and you stab everyone in the head because the game's a broken piece of crap. What a shame. What a piece of shit. It really was and, and he was doing that same exact thing in his gameplay, by the way. This, these last two or three clips was just him doing it. Shameless cash in. Uh, this game is fucking exploitable. Watch me exploit it. Come on, Capcom, for the upteenth freak. And then he got killed by somebody in that same way. Poetic Here's justice. Catalyst. Uh, this Here's game wasn't that bad. Eight year wait for Catalyst, the semi sequel slash reboot to the Mirror's Edge franchise, to finally be released in 2016. Sadly, it wasn't worth the wait. This game took the franchise into an open world environment, taking the free flowing parkour gameplay and combat from the original game and adding in 30 plus hours of boring, repetitive, and utterly meaningless side content, including fetch quests, time trials, and all those all kind right. of boring things that other open world games have done in the past. There was absolutely no originality put into this game. In fact, the story itself could be rushed through in five to eight hours and not needing any of the experience points or abilities unlocked doing the side content making okay well absolutely in that case just uh get it on sale because the game went open world it meant that it had all the bugs glitches physical oh yeah it was buggy i i remember it was buggy as fuck now i remember game, making the game feel yeah better. i think it was the bugs more than anything that that pissed people off unpolished unlike the original game 
of course, there's also the ridiculously wonky combat. Oh, yeah, and the combat was great. This this was fucking nice when you kick somebody and they just ragdoll. They go full on GTA 4. Someone, they go completely paralyzed like a wet noodle, leading to hilarious things that obviously were not intended by the game. Yeah, I said, uh, I said Umbrella Core was terrible. Injury. Once you finally I said I, game, uh, it was terrible. Did I say something else? You at the end, I said it was a meme. Oops. Nothing that you did during this game it was like Metal Metal changed. Gear Survive. Hopefully you'll buy the sequel when we'll get to see if anything that happens in the future. It's a complete and utter ripoff. A game a rip that should off. not have existed unless they were actually going to put some effort into it. Unfortunately, it looked like they took the easy way out, instead cramming in tons of repetitive and meaningless side content to claim that they had a game longer than five to eight hours. It was a blatant lie. It was an underwhelming fail. And Mirror's Edge Catalyst ultimately is just going to be a forgotten footnote in gaming history. Number seven. I don't know why it's just like, I don't know, man. Another game on There's like, even if you do a list like this, and you can be negative, and of course being negative on YouTube pays off, and it brings more people to watch, especially those worst lists, the shittiest games of whatever year. But he adds this extra, I don't know, the fact how punchable he is when he talks about shit like this, and how spiteful and angry he is, and upset he is. That's the thing that, that makes him more annoying by than everybody else. Because Angry Joe does that same shit. But of course it's much better, uh, but he's not as... Like, and his gimmick is to be angry, but he's not actually like spiteful and I don't know, mean. Being stuck in development hell, the Last Guardian was an big ups Jay Ruiz for the membership. Supposed to be a system seller for the PS3, but ended up not being released. Oh, and we got the Last Guardian. 16 due to massive amounts of production delays and development horror stories. This was, I guess, a mixed bag kind of situation. Puzzles were basic and simple. Probably. The game had. I wouldn't play this, so I don't know because there's no collectibles or secrets or hidden anything in the game. The game can be beaten in an underwhelming 10 hours for a full-priced retail release. The graphics performed horribly on the PlayStation 4 with a frame rate that chugged below 30 frames per second many different times of the game. And ultimately, the game just feels dated. If this game had come out during the PS3 era before we had played games with better graphics, better puzzles, and better platforming, then maybe we all would have been blown away. But the sad fact is the only real thing that this game has going for it is the emotional connection between the protagonist and the creature. And even then, as your trust level grows throughout the game, sometimes the creature won't even. Yeah, I'm probably gonna to do a soundboard video explaining all this stuff. Repeatedly in the direction you want to go, and the damn thing might make it for members right only, though. Sometimes it's not an important thing; it's just like a thing. Away from the way you want to progress, it really is annoying and frustrating. And some people have defended this game, saying, "But." There's an emotional connection, and that's a really awesome experience. Or, oh, the creature doesn't listen to you all the time because an animal in real life doesn't listen to you all the time, right? Listen, the bottom line is there have been other video games with emotional connections between the, the, the development cycle of this game that have done it better, and those games have surpassed what this game was trying to do. And sorry, a game with unresponsive controls, whether they're intentional or not, is still a game with unresponsive controls that are incredibly annoying. So The Last Guardian would have probably been an amazing, breathtaking game if it actually had been released during the PS3 era, but been there, done that. We've seen games with better graphics, better controls, better platforming, better puzzles, and pretty much everything in this game done better already. Too All little, right, let's too move on to the next late. one. Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. And again, we have the text on the screen, bare minimum, bare minimum. If you thought that the modern era reboot of the classic comedy franchise that came out in this summer of 2016 in movie form was the worst possible thing, you didn't play the video game tie-in. Not only was this game sold for a full $60, the game didn't have any of the characters of the reboot movie in it, nor did it have any of the voice talents of the actresses. The game itself was an incredibly uninspired four-player cooperative shoot-em-up by which you fight waves and waves of generic... I mean, the Ghostbusters movie from 2016 was incredibly uninspired shoot-em-up. There's literally <laughs> basically no ability at all, and it's just an insanely boring, repetitive, uninspired grind, the likes of which you've played many times before. How this game could be sold it's like watching a DSP stream. Completely unacceptable. It's, it's a repetitive fucking grind and rip off based off of the Ghostbusters franchise, trying to prey upon people who actually liked the movie and were looking for a little bit more in the lore of this game, which doesn't exist. So the question is. 
How is this possible? And the answer came a couple months later when the news actually hit the internet that the company that had made this Ghostbusters game oh. went out of business. That oh, they filed for bankruptcy. I wonder what DSP is going to say about this. That's right. They already were in so much crippling debt during the development of this game. They realized that they would make a... And they also got the Chapter 7. You see, Fireforge Games filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy. A little bit of a cheap buck by using the Ghostbusters franchise and releasing a piece of crap <laughs> to maybe liquidate some of that debt. So really, this game <laughs> was a game. The way he's skating on him. Failing game company to try to pay game off some already overwhelming debt from previously failed gaming ventures. What Bro, you that's you in the future. At least the f that's you in the future, making marathons to try and, and make your bankruptcy better. Few of us who actually bought the game, oh. I think most of us, however, have uh, learned the that these game tie-ins are just a is internet content creation of on-demand and also live video streaming services. Huge rip-off, and we're not going to be fooled by them <laughs> in the future. <laughs> if Number she knew, five, if she knew. Zero. And all this this whole rant from today about Square Enix and how they should have known? Well, DSP, you should have known. Oh, Nintendo. I could talk all day about the woes of this company and how they've lost touch with the me. Yeah, look at them. They're filing for bankruptcy. And this was he actually wanted to showcase this enough to actually show a screenshot on your screen. This is how much he wanted to, to make his point. They went out of business. Look, it's a shit game. It's a cash grab. And we're not going to be fooled by them in the future. Not going to be fooled. And this number is five. this is number five, but there's no more of these videos, right? Like, because they don't get suggested. I don't know, because the way he was trying to scam this, he had 20 entries, four fucking videos about this. I don't know how much he thought people would care about him, but they obviously didn't. Star Fox Zero. Oh, Nintendo. I could talk all day about the woes of this company and how they've lost touch. Hey, big ups, uh, old school gamer. I'm sorry you have COVID. Everybody drop a, a prayer hands in chat for old school gamer so he can get better from his COVID. Get better, dude. Don't get worse. All right. Fox Zero is pretty much right. a quintessential example of this. A franchise that always kind of lauded itself on having great flying controls decided to instead adapt itself completely to a mandatory control scheme using the Wii U gamepad. All right, this is this is worthless. And we do not care. Of the Star Fox we do not care. And how am I going to find it? Now I have to go and look here. Or uh, and, and you see this? Towards the end of the, the lifespan of this channel, when it was actually dying for real, uh, what he decided to do is turn it into DSP Gaming because he could still monetize this channel. And he made this channel into a landfill of garbage playthroughs and playing Call of Duty for, what is this, seven minutes? And then some more. He made like five videos like this. They're seven minutes long, eight minutes long. It's pretty wild. Then he was playing South Park, Eternal Darkness, ran his channel into the ground. But before all of that, he, there was an alert video. My future on YouTube is at stake. Please support. What happened this time? All right, what is going on, everyone? Phil here. What happened? And this is a special video for those of you who are watching my videos on YouTube, okay? Uh, those who are... <laughs> he was making videos for these people for, what, five years? Four years? Almost, at this point. Four years. Oh, for those of you watching me on YouTube. But nowadays, he replaces engagement with views. That's the only thing that You're changes. All of my classic videos on DSP Gaming on a daily basis. You know, eight years of work. Hey, what's up, Jose video. TV? And for those of you who have transitioned over in the last week to my other YouTube channel, KO Gaming, so that you could continue to watch the ongoing playthroughs and all the... And his hair is... Doing, is somewhere in between being better than nowadays and worse than nowadays. I don't know how to explain it. Ran into trouble in the last week and was demonetized. Oh no! For those who want to know, erroneously, the news is not good. The news is very grim. <laughs> um, AdSense, Google AdSense, has not responded to my. Oh, go fuck yourself! To try to get DSP gaming. Go fuck yourself. And uh, creator support, which is the helpline for YouTube. Is literally just oh the the thing with the likes is because they're actually disabled. Um, I it shows like this because I have the extension that removes the that adds in the dislikes, but they're actually disabled, and the comments are disabled too because can't do anything. It's a it's that kind of a video, and he wanted to make it exactly over ten minutes long so he can put mid roll ads, 
because it's Phil. We get a yes or no answer from Nobody Adam. else can do it but Phil. A yes or no answer. How dare you? Literally just ignored me. And I don't have a direct line of contact. And yeah, go fuck yourself. That's the bottom line with this. So we go back to this channel and it's just this. It's just oh, he had a uh wow. Wow, what a quadrilogy of content. Actually, it's five. There's five of them. Five videos. First one is called Alert. I'm back. Huge changes to KO Gaming. Watch for full details. Second video. Uh, this is actually not a drama video. I don't know why it looks like that. Because it has a shitty thumbnail. Then we have... Which, these are uploaded in the wrong order. First we have DSP Gaming Emergency Livestream Part 2. Then we have Part 1. That is called The Explanation. And the thumbnail is as you can see it. Is, is the man with the hands on his head. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> well, look at this. It's fucking amazing thumbnail. And uh, next we got part three. So first one is called, what was it? Breakdown? No, Brainstorming. Then he had a, uh, whatever, I fucking lost it. Because this is that kind of channel. Okay, here it is. Brainstorming, Explanation, and Ideas. And Temporary Strategy. Final. I want to go to this one and go to the end of the video to see what's actually going to happen. Because this whole video is just him. Because he's at his PC desk. Do you know what this means? What this means is that he's doing a live stream uh, texting YouTube support. So or I'm PayPal or some... Twitter right now. I'm, oh yeah, he's on Twitter. Okay. And let's... I, hopefully we'll get more, even more people to talk. And we'll get a good discussion going about... <laughs> what? For the future. Yeah, okay. listen to his fucking options. Oh, by the way, your name is Josh Hustle, not John Hustle. I'll read your chair in a moment, but I'm sorry, dude. I keep calling you jo John Hustle. Oh yeah, and the chair is going to shake like crazy. It's that's a, that's days, a meme dude. as well. It's one of those days. I'm sorry, man. I feel bad now. <laughs> it was a drama oh, yeah, marathon. Man. Someone who just says, I vote to re-upload classic playthroughs on Twitch. Oh yeah, this one has no comments. I don't know about that. Like, you can? You have man is an existing example of what I've done for eight years. Eight years of work. Right, fifty thousand videos. Wow, that's a, so many fucking videos. I, I hate like this. I hate that number. Fifty, sixty thousand videos. I hate that number. Uh, dark side. I Hill, despise it. Where it's still there because it it represents everything that is wrong about the fucking shit. Everything is wrong about it. And enjoy them at their leisure. Um, it sucks that I won't make money on it anymore. You know, eight years of work. That so they demonetize him. That's 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 the drama. They demonetize him. Cause why else would he be sitting on the PC? Uh, let's see the last like a minute of this. Cause he was T posing, Y posing. Okay. No PUBG tonight. Nope. No PUBG. Sorry, guys. You know. And by the way, PUBG was just gonna be a stream where I hang out with you guys anyway, which is literally what we just did for the past four hours. So basically, what PUBG was going to be already happened. All right. <laughs> uh. Karmica just cheers says, have you ever tried using Facebook video? Oh, no, yeah, Facebook, Facebook video. video. I can't use Facebook. It's Facebook terrible. terrible. Yeah. I had a Facebook account, and people kept trying to log into it, and basically Facebook would lock it and lock it and lock it, <laughs> and lock it over and over to the Facebook point. is so shitty, man. What the fuck? Who gave him this stupid-ass suggestion to do Facebook gaming? With Facebook. I'm not using it ever again. No, no Facebook. Being understanding today, I apologize there was no Vice City on the stream. Oh, this, um, this, it sucks. The, the chair, the way yeah, it's shaking. I that everything is happening like this way. I obviously did not plan that this was so good. happen. You know, um, it sucks. But sadly, that's life. Sometimes things don't work out the way you want. Right now, we're in a situation where I don't know if I'm ever going to get advertisement rights back on D DSP Gaming. So in the meantime, this is sad. I'm going to upload. If it was a YouTuber that actually made good shit, I would feel bad. I would feel very bad. Because there are a lot of people that put a ton of effort into making what DSP claims to make. And they don't, they don't bitch about it even half as much as this guy bitches about it. So this is it. This is the death of this channel. Eventually, there was a video. DSP Gaming is back. Thanks, everybody. Now, everybody go there. Fuck KO Gaming. This is trash. And here's that video. It's only six minutes long, four minutes long. Because if he could monetize it, which he probably couldn't, if he could monetize it, it would be 10 minutes long. Somehow, miraculously. 
Hello everyone. I don't know how it happens that 10 minute long videos get more ad revenue because you can put more ads. It's Phil here and it's actually pretty late night. I'm making a very quick video here for those of you. What time was it? Who have was it 4 a.m.? Watching my videos on KO Gaming for the past three weeks. I want to say thank you to everyone who in the interim of time when DSP Gaming was demonetized erroneously by Google. Erroneously? By because they fixed the problem. It was completely on their end and had nothing to do with me or anything I had done. Uh, but anyway, for those so they who... actually did for real erroneously ban them, and it's this kind of shit that happens to DSP all the time. It's really funny because I don't see most people have this all the time. Came over here. I don't know how this channel. I don't know how it happens. Video content on this channel for the last few weeks. I want to say thank you very much for your dedication. Really awesome to know that even at a time when the normal channel was under a lot of problems, that you guys would still move over to a new channel if need be to watch my stuff. Makes me feel great, and I know that it was not easy. It was a pain in the ass to have to come here every day instead of DSP Gaming and going back and forth between the two to find out what was going on. The good news is, it seems like we are good to go on DSP Gaming. It was a few days ago. I got full monetization back on my channel, and so slit. since then, the past few it's couple of days, I've been uploading exclusively. So this is it, gaming, including night and uh, I think I'm gonna end it here because, yeah, I mean, I did what I wanted to do today. And thanks everybody for being here after all this time, these millions of years. And uh, I'm feeling like listening to some liquid banger. One of them. Let's see what I decide to hear. Uh, money. Money is going to be. All right. Have fun. And I'm going to see you next time. I don't know why this is starting soon. Thank you everybody for the chill. Uh, don't forget to it's clock out. To cause trouble. I'm going back. And then that's it. I'm the all right. Who operated a successful YouTube channel? Somebody drink all my Pepsi. Fuck you. I need that money. I need that money. I need that money. So fuck it. I need that money. Calling out ball alert. alert. Got no problem with ball money. alert. And everybody on ball money. alert. And anybody else out there talking shit about me. Let's Here we go. Fuck. Get your ass out of fucking work, bitch. Help your boy out. Shout out to your buddy, I'm embarrassed bro. my KD. I'm just trying to help Brandon. I'm lurking. My streaming is to make Brandon fuck niggers. Fuck, I fuck, fuck nice niggers. I want a bitch that's so fat. Bitch is so black. I love Shout fat. Out to your buddy, I love bro. dick. I, I love dick. Dick, Me. dick, dick. I need that money. 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 So fucking lurking. I need that money. I need that money. I need that money. Baller alert. Come the fuck on. Let's have a fuck. Let's have a fuck. Come the fuck on. Let's have a fuck. How did I gain so much weight? Gain so much power? Play this game right here. I'm fucking out. Overeating every now and then. Overeating every now and then. I'm nice man. Real talk, thinking about cutting the stream off. Quit switch and go drive the bus. I'm real talk, thinking alert. about cutting the stream off. Quit switch and go drive alert. the bus. Alert. I need that money. What the fuck? I'm lurking. I need that money. Ch -ch 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 Shout out to your buddy. I need bro. that money. I need that money. I need that money. So fuck it. Get your ass out there. I need that money. Bitch. I need that money. Honey, honey, honey. Come the fuck on! Let's have a fuck! Let's have a fuck! Come the fuck on! Let's have a fuck! Help your boy out. Me! I'm lurking. Baller alert. Baller alert. Calling out baller alert. Got no problems with baller alert. But everybody on baller alert. And anybody else out there talking shit about me. Here we go.